Hello, and welcome to session number 17 yes. of The Unsung Tales, a One Ring actual play on the Happy Jacks RPG Network. Uh, to find all the sessions of this game, you can visit happyjacks.org slash unsungtales, there's no the, and then to find all the shows on the Happy Jacks Network, you can visit happyjacks.org. Uh, my name is Kimmy, I go by she, her pronouns, and I am your lore master for this game. Um, we just know that we are using safety tools at the table. Um, we've got X cards, and um, we also have done Alliance and Veils documents, so we all know what's okay at the table and what's not. And yeah, we're so deep into this campaign. Go back and listen to it. It's wild, and we're all really excited tonight because we have a new person at our table. All right, uh, let's go ahead and start. <laughs> let's go ahead and start on this side of the table so we can <laughs> model our intros for Dear Ray. Hello, I'm Sam. Uh, I play Runa of Bree. She's a barding treasure hunter. Uh, we both use she, her pronouns. Um, and I do a little bit of chaos and a lot of climbing things. Yep. That's true. Hi, everybody. I'm Kai. I use he, they, and she pronouns, and I'm here to play Erland of Mithland, uh, a elf captain of Linden, uh, who uses he, they pronouns. Hi everyone, my name is Ray, and I'll be playing Barandir. Am I saying that right? Barandir? Sure. Barandir. It's your name, so however you want to say it however is right. However I want to say it. <laughs> uh, who is a ranger of the north. Uh, both of us use he, him pronouns, and um, he's got a spear, he's got a rune scored shield, which is really cool. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to see who Barandir is. Yeah, we are too. Yeah. Welcome. We're so excited you're here. All right, I'm super excited. Super, super <laughs> excited. This is... It's real serious behind the scenes. It's, it's like super legit. It's, it's cool. I met Ray at our local strategic con. I was like, hey, do you want to just like stream with us sometimes? It's super chill, low cookie. He kind of walked in today. He's like, oh, oh, there's <laughs> yeah. like a lot of a lot of like stuff and equipment and things. So uh, I, I did not properly prepare him. So thank you for being brave and staying. Yeah. Thank you for having me. We have everyone screaming. Yeah. 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 Screaming, yeah. <laughs> that would have been an interesting start to the game. <laughs> like, yep. He just walks in. Oh, oh no, no. no. I'm going to leave now. <laughs> hi, hi, everybody. I'm Kadev. Uh, I'm playing Hanar, a uh, dwarf of Durin's folk. Uh, we are both he, him. And uh, yeah, I... I feel like we're away from the elves for a while, so I don't have anybody impressed with my knowledge of the trees. <laughs> well, yeah, but you're aware already. Like, it's, it's a shock value thing. <laughs> I don't know. We got these old crones to impress. Well, true, true. I've seen trees older than you ladies have. <laughs> true. That sounds like fight order. Yeah, it's like not fight yeah, yeah. It, it's not. It doesn't work right. Uh, but yeah, yeah, uh, we're. Ready to deal with otters and apparently far larger and more horrifying swans. Yeah. <laughs> so a quick recap from last session. Um, you were given this map by Glorfindel, who is uh, Elrond's like right hand man, like the the of all elves, super attractive, super amazing. Also a little bit of like doomsday prepper with like maps all over his room. But as we all know, spoilers, doom is coming. So we also the movies, we wrong. know how that comes. He's so right. he's not wrong. <laughs> but uh, he gave you a map that had some weird things marked on it, rumors, places he thinks that the shadow is growing more powerful. There was like this weird thing about a fire dwarf over in the Shire somewhere. <laughs> Looking at you, Dave. I'm, I'm so yeah. delighted. <laughs> um, and so just rumors and, and different places where strange things had been happening um, so that you could help and just be aware through your travels. Um, one of the things that caught your eye last time was um, something called where the sleeper rests. And then it's like, there was like a question mark, like what is the sleeper? Um, and that was down in a, an area of Erador called um, Swan Fleet, which is a big marsh area. Most people consider it uh, like completely uninhabited. It's not at all. There's one big um, kind of big for this area. Um, like well-known town called um, Swan Town. Um, it's run by the charming uh, ex-outlaw mm -hmm. Hugh uh, Blackbriar that you met last time. He is the master of Swan Town, um, but that's kind of the only actual known quantity in that area. <clears throat> uh, this is kind of where all the the leftovers of, of, of other places have come and, and live. A lot of them live in other places in the swamp, but they are incredibly good at hiding and very 
um, uh, hesitant to let themselves be known to outsiders. Um, one of the groups that are the wise women that um, are, live way deep into in the in the marsh. And you met uh, Mother Wendrith when you went there. Um, but before that, you had to find a guide. You're like, okay, we have to get all the way down into um, Medcott, which is the other kind of like rumored area where people live in, in uh, Swanfleet. And you obtained a guide for the very, very steep price of a few shiny things and a coin and some other things. Um, and these were actually the descendants of the awakened otters that the elves had awakened years ago. And they still have the, the, the ability to speak, but they're very much otters and they like shiny things. And they gave you a tour that consisted of, here's the log, it was a tree. Please give me another shiny thing. <laughs> Eventually they led you all the way to um, kind of the entrance to Medcott, which was um, these huge trees that had kind of grown together into a wall over centuries and centuries of time. And you can't really see into this giant wall, but um, uh, Mother Wen Wendr Wendrith, sorry, I keep wanting to say Wendrith and that's not it right. Wendrith uh, came out and greeted you um, you gave her an offering of herbs that you had uh, collected in Rivendell, which, way to make a good impression. <laughs> I love, like, in the book, it's like, oh, they're really cranky, so roll to see, you know, whether the the hags attack the party. It's like, oh, no, you came with, like, presents that were perfect for them. So no, <laughs> we're going to ignore that table. We're going to note your way around Crohn's. <laughs> um, but she did, um, you know, say that, you know, they'd take your request under consideration, and then left you outside um, for the evening. So last we saw, she was headed back in. Um, you know that you are not allowed just to walk in. It's like insta-death for jumping in, for going inside, because there's a sacred pool back there that you're not supposed to ever look upon. Um, so we're going to see what, how that plays out a little later. All right, did I miss anything important? I got the... Other than the fact that I really want one of those otters to be a jungle cruise ride operator. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like... They were the backside of water. <laughs> um, the tower with the rumor. Oh, the, yes. The, the uh, thing that's bigger than a tree that we could definitely go inside as the otters described. Right. The otters have uh, trouble with some words for the tall people. So they weren't quite able to describe what it was. They were like, they knew it wasn't like a tree, but it was big like a tree and you could fit inside it, but it wasn't quite a cave. And that's about as good as you got for where the sleeper actually lies. Yes. So, uh, yeah. And... and we did convince the otters to like hang around. You did. For promise of future rewards. Yes. So they're <clears throat> like around chilling somewhere, maybe going to help you, definitely for the price of more shiny things. Yes. Magically, they know what tipping is, like, <laughs> and they expect a tip. So <laughs> they've been around these mortals too long. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Um, okay. Uh, but yes, yeah, so you know that the sleeper is something. You haven't gotten a good description quite yet, whether it's. Um, going to be something that attacks you, whether it's something you have to rescue, whether it's a person, whether it's an item, you still haven't quite gotten um, that description set yet, if that makes sense. Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, so then we're going to start with our new character. Um, so you are a ranger of the north. Yes. Like one of the uh, the lesser men who have descended hey. from... <laughs> okay. Wait like, Yeah, yeah. For, as a group, not not you specifically, uh -huh. uh, who've descended from uh, the Numenorians and the kings of old, but who've lost their kingdoms and are kind of wandering the world, um, protecting it from the shadow, but with um, less purpose than kind of their souls and bodies deserve. Uh, and um, at some point in your travels, um, why don't you tell us a little bit, like, are you a young ranger? Have you been through a lot of stuff? Have you Are you just now starting to adventure? Uh, Barandir is a little seasoned. Okay. I put that he's 43 years old, So, um, but he's also got the blood of Numenor in him, so I don't know what that means. So I imagine him, like, I don't know, I guess my age currently, <laughs> or, like, experience-wise. So he is been out and about um, and maybe is starting to get a little jaded. Of the world. Okay. 
Um, to give some context, uh, during the Lord of the Rings movies era, Aragorn's in his 80s. Mm -hmm. So you're not quite, you're like, you you probably aren't quite that, like, the, the, the blood of the Numenorians probably isn't quite that strong in you. Yeah. But, yeah, but you're definitely not, like, an average 40-year-old. Gotcha. Um, not that 40-year-olds are bad. They can do are anything. Great. They're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, that, no, nothing to do with anything. Um... <laughs> Um, so you're able to, you know, like, you're, you're very strong, you're very agile, you're probably more like uh, mid-20s, you know, to 30s average human that we know it today. Nice. Um, but stronger, you have, you know, better endurance, you are hero, you are, you are descended from heroes. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> Feels good, man. Yeah. Feels good. Feels good, man. All right, uh, and you've got a spear you said is your main weapon. Yes, a keen spear. Okay, I like that. This is like the spear chair. I, I, I got that. Yeah, <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> uh, the brave hobbit you're replacing was also a fighter with a spear. So. Oh, excellent. Yeah, it's like, I like that little connection. Um, and you have a rune scored shield that has been passed down in your family for generations, probably. And it, it's actually a Numenorean crafted? Or is that the, just the story? Or do you know? Um, I don't think I do, but it okay. is an heir of Anor. That's the uh, the virtue that it's called. Okay. But, and it's an heirloom from passed down from my family. Okay. Um, but I think all I know about it is maybe its name. Okay. Yeah. Do you know what its name is? Uh, Are you gonna think about it? Yeah, my character okay. does. <laughs> uh, we haven't met you yet, so you've got a while. Yeah. <laughs> um and uh. Think of something cool, and then we'll translate it into Sidarn or whatever you need for you. So don't think that you cool. have to come with it. Um, and all right. Now, like everyone else in this group, um, you have this weird friend who he's, uh, seems really old. Like, his body seems very old. He's got this, like gray hair that's got like bits of white in it and these like braided locks um he's got like deep dark skin like like deep mahogany wood um and an incredibly long beard that has this intricate braiding um and you know him as leoren so and he's known as a fortune teller he's got um this wooden staff that's shiny but like with age it's not um like like um, shellacked or anything like that and the top of it is has it looks kind of like it was broken off like ages ago um, and it hasn't been sanded but just time has worn it smooth again so it's kind of this thing that he kind of hunches on and it's like a little bit below shoulder height um, and he wears this kind of myriad of uh, like leather travel clothes um, and then he has a large cloak that has this huge hood that comes over his eyes and um, it, it's he does smoke sometimes, but it's it's more like like when he gets like quiet or contemplative, and he kind of like pulls the hood down over his head. It's more like like watching like a like a volcano that's about to erupt. You just like sense this like something like great and deep, and maybe you don't want to mess with it too much. Um, but for the most part, he's uh, very jovial. Okay. He has a very sharp wit and a okay. uh, kind of sarcastic, dry sense of humor, which can be offensive, but somehow he it never gets him into too much trouble. Or when it does get him into trouble, he always has someone around to get him out of that trouble. Um, he also has this very big, like, husky-looking dog mm -hmm. um, named Ranyar. And Ranyar is about the size of, like, a small pony. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, very well-trained and seems a, weird, a little bit weirdly smart. Like, eh, it's just a dog. It's just, why is the dog looking at me? No, uh, okay. He's talking to the dog, and the dog's, okay, no, I'm not gonna ask questions. So, um, you can think whatever you want about that, or what you, ever you think your character would want, <laughs> would, would know about that. Um, but for the most part, he travels from town to town, and tells fortunes in a very strange way, in taverns and stuff, that's how he tends to make his money. Mm -hmm. um, themes pretty shady and silly most of the time, but every once in a while, like when you hang out with him, he just has, has like wildly accurate insight. That's just like, oh, okay. And then he'll go and, you know, tell some, you know, tavern person who's like, here's my two coins for my future. Oh, definitely plants, you know, potatoes, three potatoes in every row for the next three, and this like right. random weird stuff. Okay. 
So quite the character. Um, Leirin has been all over. And how do you think you met Leirin? We can work together to build this. Yeah, I think he, I think he tricked me. Mm -hmm. I think um, maybe it was something to do with Ray, Rainer? Is that Renyar. The? Renyar. Renyar. Um, and whatever it was, that's why I'm, uh, I'm a little scared of Rainar, Renyar, actually. Like, yes. it's kind of stay away, keep my distance. So okay. It just kind of growls at me every once in a while. Just kinda, <laughs> yeah. All right. I like it. <laughs> uh so, so what happened? Let, let's just, so we can just narrate it and sure. kind of like say what happened. So he tricked you. Was it in a tavern? Was it a wager? Was it something with telling your your fortune? Uh, well, I think Baron Deer tends to keep away from humanity, so maybe it was somewhere outside, like in in nature or something. Okay. Um, and maybe I stumbled upon the dog first and I thought it was some fell beast or some sign of uh, oh, okay. whatever um, and I think that it ended up uh, not being that through some bold twist of fate and <laughs> um, instead it was just some elaborate uh, prank or, or some sort of like lesson that Leoran was uh -huh. trying to pull on me. Okay, yeah. I like that. Um, we'll say, because Leoran knows a lot of the, the rangers and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll say, maybe when, maybe it was a test. When Are you okay with it? When you were like a new sure. young adult ranger, yeah, like yeah. you were sent out to pr do some sort of pr test to prove your abilities in some way. Um, and he had heard about it, and mm -hmm. is it okay if I if something like that happens, where he uh, like plays a oh, yeah. on you while you're in like this like moment mm -hmm. of like 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 trying to prove your worth uh, as like I am a grown adult ranger who can do this thing. Yeah, maybe it was like grab the bone from the the dog or something like oh, that. And, okay, and I just I don't know grab. Oh yeah, okay. So maybe. Um, there are like uh, wargs and large wolves mm -hmm. and things in in different parts of the 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 forests. So maybe you were supposed to um, like like uh, hunt down like a, a specific wolf that had been causing problems in uh -huh. a certain area. Um, is it okay if maybe you mistook Ranyar for that wolf? Love it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh no. So. Uh, <laughs> And so Leia Ran is out like in the forest somewhere and you're out trying to hunt down this this wolf creature. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and uh, you, you're tracking this beast. It turns out like even bigger than you thought it was going to be. And uh, just we don't have to go into the specifics of it, but it turns out like Ranyar like knew you're being you're kind of tracking him. And Leia Ran got in on it and thought it was hilarious. And it ended up like with you, uh, like finding like this old man laughing, and like Ranyar sitting there, like wanting a belly rub or something silly like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that okay? Yeah, I love it. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, um, and then may and then Leoran maybe has been your friend like since that time. So maybe like twenty years, maybe, or I guess maybe not quite twenty. So like for maybe ten years. Yep. Sure. Okay. If you're like in your forties, you were, like. Like mid twenties or late or thirty at the time. Mm -hmm. um, I guess mid twenties would probably be like when you'd be doing pro or like early twenties would be when you're doing proving things like that. So maybe like twenty years you've known Leora. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. And um, yeah, would you have been annoyed at first when you got when you found him like joking with you or how? What were your? Yeah, absolutely. I'd be super super annoyed. Okay. So maybe you didn't. Um, Get along very well at first, and then eventually they he helped you or won you over or just kept showing up. <laughs> yeah, I think it's more of a like it's he shows up and I kind of roll my eyes and I have to deal with whatever it is that he has me to deal with because that's just sort of in his nature and it always works itself out. Okay. In the end. Okay. Yeah. Um, and you still do not like Ranyar. No. Okay. <laughs> that's nuts. Okay. Um. All right, very good. And all right, we will jump to 
a scene that has happening um, kind of parallel to the events of last session um, where, why don't we have you be in, let me look at my map, map, the map, the map, the map. Um, so uh, a little bit above, uh, a little bit uh, like east and a slightly south of Rivendell is an area called the Ranger Haven which is the closest the rangers have to like a city now mm -hmm. um and it is easily in traveling distance and in fact the party when they were on their boat on the river passed it um so it's actually on your map as well the one that was given to you by glorfindel mm -hmm. um oh yeah there's actually zero mechanical reason you need to know where that is right now okay Ray, so don't worry about it <laughs> there are travel mechanics but you're not going to use that for this this is just us bringing you into the group um, so we'll say that you're there for, because that's where rangers go usually, and, uh, Leo Rin, like, you're, it's not a super comfortable place. Mm -hmm. There are a few buildings, but it's mostly, um, tents and things because, um, rangers tend to be on the move quite a lot. So most of them don't stay there for a, a copious amount of time. Okay. You'd be there on your way somewhere else, um, they all kind of have stations and places they go specifically to keep fighting off the darkness mm -hmm. in different areas of Rydor. So um, while you were there doing some sort of like menial everyday task, like sharpening your spear, or polishing your leather, or whatever it is. You don't polish oil leather, you don't polish. Well, you polish leather too. But I get to say. Anyway, mm -hmm. um, you're there and you hear a very familiar... <laughs> and it is there's no mistaking Ranyar's bark and it sounds like deeper it's like but deep, deep I can't do deep, deep but you know what I mean so you're there doing this daily thing and you hear this dog that you really don't like very much <laughs> and you know that that means Leoran is here and probably somehow magically there's always like is there and asks you for something and it always ends up a much bigger deal than it ends than it sounds like it's gonna be. So um yeah, and then without fail, like there's like this whistling of this like old song and you just like so you're sitting there. Like what would you do? Leoran, I told you to keep that damn dog away from me. It's his own master in most ways. I Really, he tells me what to do more of the time than I tell him what to do. <laughs> yeah, How are you, my friend? Uh, I am well, I suppose, as well as one can be with that beast around. I mean, he takes some of your work off your plate. He's just such a good job of keeping watch and helping all of you stay, you get to rest a bit with his sharp eyes and keen ears and even keener nose. And he kind of does the thing where Ranyar, he's like, oh yes, you're such a good boy. He kind of like scritches like the chin and he, the Ranyar, this giant dog is like, like, <laughs> yeah. Uh. <laughs> it's, it's good to see you, old friend. <laughs> and you. I... Well, favor might not be the right word, but I have an idea for you. An idea? Yes. I mean, a friend can have an idea for another friend, can't they? Your ideas tend to get me in trouble. Well, you always manage to get out of the trouble again. You're so good at that. Well, I have, uh... Actually, it's a musical performance troupe that uh, has need of someone with your skills. And I think they might be in a little bit of trouble. I need uh, someone with a spear. Uh, I do have a spear, but you said music. Uh, well, I mean, they, they, they play music, and so they need someone with a um, Let's be here to help them make their way about as they play their very fine music. 
They even know some songs from old Numenor and Anuminus that they can play. You want me to escort a musical troupe. That is why you came to see me today. Well, I thought that it might be interesting to you. I know you have such connections with old Numenor, and they might be able to help you more with your translation of your shield and imparting you old knowledge. One of them's an elf with vast knowledge of o the old times. It could be very helpful to you. Very well. I know that if I just say no now, you'll just find some other trickery to rope me in into this scheme of yours. He doesn't deny it, but he just looks like surprised and scandalized and then kind of smirks. Well, yeah, it's, it's, they ha conveniently, they happen to be very nearby and it should be very easy for you to find them. Mm. So they're just down in Swanhaven. It shouldn't take you very long. <laughs> oh, convenient indeed. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and uh, it, when you're there, uh, Ask for my, my dear friend. Like, it will be a little bit strange. Uh, you can ask for my dear friend, uh, Lady. What's her character name? What's her character name? Uh, Wendra. No, 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 don't ask for Wendra. Her. <laughs> your my, dear friend. Yeah, your dear friend. My dear friend. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, uh, uh, Lady. Uh, Swift Swimmer. Swift Swimmer. Yes. They're very literal with their names there. And uh, she will be able to guide you to where the performance troupe is uh, probably performing. Then I suppose I should make haste. I mean, I always prefer making haste. It's a boring not to do such things. What things could you miss there if you're still here? Right. I definitely take your spear and shield. I, I I definitely will do that. Yes. All right. Well, best be off. I will see you very soon. Uh, right now. All right. We we'll best be going. And the dog's like, Her. <laughs> looks really super annoyed. Like we just got here. <laughs> and so then they like he starts whistling in, and like wanders out. Uh, surprisingly spry for someone at his age, like very, very like, like healthy and walking. And there you go. Cool. Um, so you're going to go down. We'll do -do 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 travel. Um, you get to the edge of the Swan Fleet marshes. As a ranger, you would know um, this is a place that has a lot of wild stories about it. Um, have you ever been here before? Uh, yes. If it's close to the ranger outpost, then probably. Okay. Uh, you know it is known for its uh, talking otters. And okay. um, also there are, like, these uh, crones who protect this sacred pool. You probably, and the ranger would probably respect and just kind of stay the heck away from them. <laughs> like, yep. all right, we're going to respect you and not go near that. Um, it is also known for very large swans, which... Retconning slightly, I said last session that they're the size of like large dogs. I was incorrect. I looked it up. They're like the size of like as tall as men. Um, and they're not very nice. If you've ever met a swan, they're not nice in real life. And these are big ones that are also not nice because nope. swans and geese are mean. Terrible, terribly mean. Mm -hmm. um, yes. So um, you probably would know to avoid those if you can. Okay. Um. You're going to make it to the edge of the Swan Fleet. We're, I'm just going to kind of narrate through this part. Mm -hmm. You end up meeting Lady Swift Swimmer. Uh, and uh, she is a very tidy little otter. A little bit bigger otter. She's like two feet tall. And she has a small necklace with lots of seashells around it. Yeah. Um, and also she has like what are sort of stylized bangles that have been made out of like random metal pieces tied with um, 
with just different chords that she's found. Um, and she, uh, she actually has a pierced ear too. Um, no idea how that happened, but, and, uh, she is very, uh, attentive for an otter and fairly good at kind of staying on task. She doesn't get quite as distracted as Lord Paddlefoot from last session. <laughs> and, uh, she will, uh, yes, I have heard of your friends. They have made quite an impression on all of the marshes. And unfortunately they have decided to deal with Lord Paddlefoot. That is a unfortunate choice on their part, but I will not be one to cast judgment. She's looking very judgy. <laughs> um, but I would be happy to take you to them uh, for a small fee, of course. A small fee? Yes. I, I see. Um, do I have coin on, on sure. my person? And you would know too, you've been here before, like anything shiny. Like it doesn't even have to be worth anything. Like they like shiny things. They don't they can use some money, mm -hmm. but they like special shiny things. So. Okay. Um, don't like give her your, your shield family. or something. Yeah, I was gonna... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give her your rune. Yeah, money. no, no, no. no. <laughs> it's like, did you go on? <laughs> but you can make up something that's in your pocket or it does not. You don't have to have it on your character sheet. It's fine. Uh, sure. How about a... Um... How about just a really polished stone that's yeah. like nice and white? Okay. Uh, we're going to say it's like a stone from like the mountains up near Rivendell. Okay. Oh, yes, I will take a stone from Elvish lands. This is a good token of your loyalty and I mean, um, the payment for work. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Um, this way, please. Come quickly. And she she kind of like swims for a minute and she'll get like way far ahead because she moves really fast. Mm -hmm. And then she'll sit patiently for a moment and like look at the stone you gave her and wait till you catch up and then continue <laughs> and then wait. Um, and eventually you get to like very deep into the marshes. Um, <laughs> and as you're approaching, you hear um, some voices and there's the, you out of kind of the darkness comes like these, this wall of trees that have been planted in this large circle. Um, and you know how trees once, if they're planted too close together, kind of grow together. Uh -huh. What's happened is these trees over like eons have grown into what are like a wall. So at the base, they're almost one solid mass of tree. And then they kind of spread up into like separate trees, like planted at very clear intervals. So this was not like a natural occurrence. They were planted this way and then over the centuries have kind of merged into what is this wall around um, uh, this this town, basically. Okay. Um, you would know the rumors of the crones who live here. Um, probably haven't met the any, but maybe you can. Would you have met them? Um, maybe once or twice in passing. Okay. <laughs> so you might have met some, like, but not actually here in their home. Okay. Um, and uh, you hear this, like, this group is talking. That's you guys, by the way. You so don't say. So they're talking. And um, I mean, so, maybe there's other people there, and we just haven't gone around that side of the wall of trees. Yeah. That's true. Um, but uh, the thing that, like, alerts both you um, and uh, the rest of the party to the presence of others is what is the equivalent of an otter argument? as Lady Swift Swim and uh, Lord Paddlefoot run into each other and start having a very large argument about why the other is taking work from them. Um, kind of in half an otter, which is like back and forth, like with random words thrown in. Sure. My tall people, that I never watched. Much, I my, no, I got a shiny thing, baby. I got a shiny thing, this should be my shiny thing. And so it's just like in this like quiet, like dark, like darkness is coming upon like the, 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 the marshlands, like the haze of like the fog is coming up. Like you can't really see the sun anyway, but it's sort of disappearing. Like it's like this heavy kind of weighted silence with a, a splash once in a while or something. And suddenly there's like this very loud, very shrill otter argument. <laughs> so it kind of just cuts through um, the darkness and the peace, even if, if it was a little bit creepy peace. <laughs> Is everything all right? 
And then like this is just continuing. So you hear someone calling out, is this all, is everything all right? Uh, no, it seems to be escalating. Oh. Hello? A very large otter killer. <laughs> no, it's, I, I'm not an otter. I, I, I'm on the other side. Hello? Are you a swan? No, I am, I, I am, I am, I am a, a man. Oh. I, oh. Yes, I, I am a man. I am not an otter. I am not a swan. I am a man. On the other side. Uh, should I step through to you? I, I was sent by uh, by our friend. Leorin. Leorin. Oh. <laughs> yes. How delightful. I, I feel the same way. Believe me. <laughs> you sound delighted. Um, don't go into the trees. By oh, yes. the way, you'll die. Oh, well, yes, that should be avoided. <laughs> Go around the trees. Right. Uh, so, I, I, I'm sorry it's loud. I'll I'll just be a moment. <laughs> and... <laughs> and they're like completely oblivious to anything that's happened. <laughs> <laughs> so can I just like walk past them? Yeah, hundred <laughs> <laughs> percent. Uh, and then uh, yeah, I, I guess I appear on the other side where everybody else is. Yeah, and let's go around real quick and just kind of describe the scene. Like, where have you, are you kind of making camp? Or just... I think probably if the sun's going down, we probably yeah. like... We were talking about Kind of our that. plan yeah. was to yeah. find a dry spot. Okay. And... So we'll say you're probably like, we'll say like 20 yards from the gate <laughs> or this kind of like entrance area. It's not really a gate, but um, kind of making... Camp, and why don't you each describe yourselves just for a moment? What you look like? Uh, 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 average sized dwarf, not wearing like full crazy dwarf metal armor, but wearing like a very colorful coat. Uh, that it's just got a lot of pockets. It's like if you've ever seen one of those coats that someone has just sewn extraneous pockets all over yep. just for fun, that's kind of what this looks like. Um, he does have a full dwarven helmet, uh, and he's probably reclining on a rock. Uh, <laughs> like, um, because, well, no, I think probably when the speaking started, he probably sat up and like put a hand on his axe next to him. Um, yeah, uh, with what's obviously brown beard and hair that looks like it's sort of reddish. But it doesn't look naturally red. Like, it's just a weirdness. Yeah, it's like somebody that doesn't know anything about, like, oh, you have to bleach darker hair before you add color to it to make it really stand out. So it's kind of like someone that just tried to dye their very dark beard and hair red, but didn't realize that intermediate step to make it effective. He looks great. Right. Yeah. Hello? Well, Mets. Well, cheers. Baron Deer? Uh, oh, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm Hanar, excuse me, yes. Uh, uh, so, Leoran sent you. Uh, yes, that, that is, that's correct. Uh, yep. Well, well, Matt, hello. Hello. Um, Erland is a tall adjacent, I wouldn't call them actually tall. Um, very, very fair-skinned, like, maybe has never seen the light of day, even though he's been walking around for a very long time. <laughs> um, fair elf with like black hair that's braided very, very intricately and up in the neatest elven updo you've ever seen. Usually elves don't have their hair up like this, but Erland does. Um, and he wears very elegant, flowy, like white to sea foam colored clothes and like robes that are very normally billowy. But right now, they are tucked inelegantly up underneath a leather cuirass because he doesn't want to get them in the swamp. Um, and uh, he has a pack with, um, you know, just a single-shouldered pack that does have um, a bow on it and a quiver built into it. But then the bigger part of it is actually what looks like a, a fairly heavy bag. Um, and Erlen's pretty slight, so this is, like, all he's carrying. <laughs> um, you saw Leorin. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, he came to visit me with, with that uh, beast of his. Oh! Well, isn't that lovely? No. This is Runa. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. Uh, and Runa is uh, a little bit tall for a human woman. She's like 5'7-ish. Um, uh Slim, but like very athletic build. Like you can obviously tell that she is a very physical person. She has two swords, one long sword, one short sword. Um, and she's wearing leather armor that's um, worn, but like very well taken care of. Um, and she has long red hair that's like braided into an intricate pattern back away from her face. So it like doesn't get in the way. Um, and uh, yeah, she's like, oh, you've met Ranyar and Leorin. And he sent you to the swamp. He must like you. Yes, unfortunately. <laughs> but I am here. Uh, and uh, looks like you are all breaking from camp, making camp. Yes, we're about to make camp. We're waiting to hear from the denizens of this lovely tree circle home thing. In the morning. In the morning. Ah. Well, then I came at the perfect time, I suppose. Uh, how can I help? We were about to make camp and then some dinner, I suppose. Yes. Uh, not much of a cook, but I can certainly help with the camping portion. And the eating. And the eating. You're very welcome right. to the eating. It's um, the best rations from Imladris. Oh. So, uh, biscuits and the like? Um, slightly better than that. Okay. They I, didn't just give us the um, traveling goods. Uh, you would know Imladris oh. is the elven name for Rivendell. Oh. So that's like a fancy elf town. Yes. Oh. And Erlen is being yeah. fancy. Very fancy. <laughs> as fancy as you can as be with his studio. Uh, it's tucked up. It's all tucked up. <laughs> At that moment, well, fine. And then they just like glare and like swim off in two different directions. And oh, no. the otters are just gone. <laughs> oh, we needed one of those. Oh. Cursed otter politics. <laughs> It'll be the doom of us all. <laughs> Is it utterly ridiculous? I'm acting that with Colton. <laughs> not not Colton S. It's very funny, but no. I got not Dave. I think I think he would like that very no, much I as know. a fan he, of language. He would. He would think that's Ireland right. make the dad joke. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like they're dwarf jokes on this thing. <laughs> oh yeah, probably. All right. Um. So. Uh, uh, you, you set up camp, and you make dinner, um, and uh, have a little bit of... Do you want to have a scene where you're kind of just talking and getting to know each other? Yeah. Okay. Sure. We do a lot of, like, talking and not a lot of dice rolling in this yeah. game. Just a heads up. <laughs> <laughs> Very narrative. Love it. Take on the one ring. Okay. Thank you for your help. Um, I'm curious why... Under what... Pretext, Leoran sent you. Oh. It's hard to tell with him, isn't it? Sometimes it's a joke, but, uh, well, he always does seem to have a knowing smile and plan as quixotic as it might be. That is true. Maybe to a fault. Um, well, we are making our way to something that we discovered recently through the help of a friend that we might continue to need your aid with if you are as capable as you seem. Uh, yeah. Well, I... Well, y yes, I suppose that, that, that will... Uh, it's always a long time. I don't know about you and his... his, his adventure, quests of war, what, whatever it is he assigns for you, but these these things always... T <sighs> yes. I'm, it's it's me and him. It's not you. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm You're quite right. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen him up to his um, mystical ways. I'll leave it at that. Yeah, so That's a nice way of putting it. <laughs> Look, here's the thing. How do you feel about climbing stuff and fighting things? Uh, I I do like the occasional climb, and I I accustomed to fighting things. Yes. Great, 
you can stay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but don't fight everything. No, some things you can make friends with. Yes. Well, if, you, if something needs fighting, it's usually <laughs> fairly obvious. <laughs> yes. But uh, was, was Leoran acting his usual self? Uh, by that, you mean... Uh... Like wandering around, causing minor trouble as he goes? Oh, yes. Oh. Yes, indeed. Well, that's a relief. Well, Giving people open-ended answers to very simple questions. Yes. He mentioned you three are some sort of troop, uh, musical <laughs> in nature. That's not oh. entirely wrong. It's true. <laughs> we enjoy music. And on occasion we do we play, it. play it. In fact, we just played it yesterday. But um, that isn't our only purpose. <laughs> hmm. How do you feel about um, actively pursuing, maybe thwarting ancient evil? Evil. <laughs> Maybe that's like where the music is in like the eyes, like just yeah. the, the glazed look yep. over. Um, oh, oh, I'm sorry, I, I, I zoned out there for a second. Yes, I, I evil. Yes, I, I do like smiting evil and going after things of the dark. Well. One could say it is my purpose. <laughs> and he gets kind of Stupidly, mysteriously, rangery. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. Hmm. Better than just climbing. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm just glad if there's anyone else that can help you climb things. <laughs> that I'm not, is true. Not a fan myself. It's not a contest, though. I'm not mud wrestling anyone else. I. I am useful for getting you to <laughs> where you need. Uh, right. Uh, oh, it's getting late. I think. Uh... So right at that moment, that uh, you hear like this little like thumping noise, and the fog is like really come up because the marsh mm -hmm. and it's like pretty hard to see very far, um, and it's coming from the entrance. Uh, to Medcott, and um, kind of out of the mist comes uh, Mother Wendrith. It's like oh. an incredibly old uh, crone uh, burned deer, and she's like almost bent double, and she's got a walking stick, which is kind of what you're hearing against the thing. We have discussed it, and we have decided that you will be judged. And if you are worthy, we will Take you to where the sleeper lies. Oh. Seems well. acceptable. And she just like kind of ignores you and walks up. <laughs> she walks like there's like a tree near your camp that's not part of the, the circle. And she walks up to it and like strangely like agile kind of like brings herself up and she takes um, a large bird skull. It looks like it's probably like a large raven or something. She pulled it up to the tree and she like nailed it to the tree. Erland fully jumps. The first hit on the nail, yeah. he jumps. Good luck to you. And she like turns and like walks should, back in. Should we do something with this? What? And then she... Is it here to watch? Is it... Uh, you can roll lore for me if you think you might know the lore of this. Well, I travel places. I read so many books. Mm -hmm. So it's always the D12, and then if you have a point in it, you add a D6. Got it. Okay. Yeah, so we call the feet die as the D12. Got it. So, and then mm -hmm. the skill die are the D6s. And then you add them together, and if you beat your target number... Oh, and by the way, did his target numbers get... Oh, uh, we'll just use what's there for now. Can okay. I use scan to examine the bird skull? <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to actually make you do that. Like, you don't have to roll for that. Oh, okay. Uh, looking at it, because nothing's going to change about it. Okay. Like, looking at it, like, it's a bird skull, and it doesn't seem to be any weird magical things with it, but this was clearly, like, some sort of weird ritual. She didn't whisper anything, but it, like, means something. And you can see in this tree there are 
what looks like like holes that may have been from previous nails. Okay. Huh. I unremarkably got it. Oh, you did? Okay. I unremarkably succeeded. Okay. It, so it tried it, but okay. I did succeed. Okay. Did you see? Did no, not? not okay. Um, I succeeded, but I also got an eleven. Oh no! Oh, with an eye, I got okay. a tanguar and an eye. Okay. Well, the eye just like it doesn't like mess it up. It doesn't mean you fail it. So, um, did you meet your your basic? Oh, here we ability? go. This is uh, <laughs> what, what am I testing? Lore. Lore. Okay. That's okay. Two. I got one more. Okay. Nine, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then the target number is the, would it be the wits? It'll be yeah, the yes. one above yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. So the skills below it. And if you look above it, that's the number so you're rolling. I got 10. Uh, is it uh, roll under, right? Or is it uh, roll over? Roll over. Roll over. No, I totally okay. fell. I got you can it. meet it or roll over. Okay. I got 10. Okay. Um, You've heard uh, like strange rumors of like, the people in in Swan Fleet and in the marshes here having some sort of ritual where, like, t when if they have a an argument between them, they summon the ghost bird, and this is the step to do that. Okay. And the ghost bird is kind of like a mysterious, like nobody knows, but it okay. comes in and is like a a, a judgment upon mm -hmm. and it will decide or arbit or like be, be the arbiter between situations mostly by killing whoever is wrong so Wonderful. there's not really like a discussion about it it's like they will nail a, a a bird skull to a tree or to like one of the the poles underneath their home and then within a few days people end up dead and that means whoever's dead is wrong great yeah um, I think Erlen kind of fishes this out of rumors that he kind of hasn't placed in one specific spot, and then, like, it suddenly comes rushing back, and <laughs> he gets paler. <laughs> There's a bird spirit. Now I'm concerned that it's the swans. I, this is... She did mention a ghost bird earlier, and to beware of it. Huh. Well, beware of it, since it's coming. Uh, right. Well, we're strangely well prepared for ghosts. I and birds and Erlen does like pull his bow off of his back and just grab an arrow just to be <laughs> prepared for oh, whatever's oh. about to happen. Like Hannah goes and takes off the coat and sets it down. <laughs> and picks up his axe. Like uh, he's looking up in the sky because it's a bird. Yeah, and he's like, yeah. Uh, I yeah. Well, new friend, I guess we're going to be fighting together sooner rather than later. And she pulls out her sword. <laughs> the thing is, I'm not sure when it's coming. This is just the beginning of a ritual of some sort that does frequently, notably end with someone dying. It's going to be the bird this time. I... Let's... Do, I... Mm, who dies? The person who's wrong. Oh, well, we're not wrong, so we don't have anything to worry about. Who is wrong, then? That's my quandary. The bird. By its very existence, it's just wrong? <laughs> well, if it's trying to kill us, then yes. I mean, I suppose, but... Is the old lady wrong? I don't think she would call the bird. <laughs> All right. If that were the case. Well, I mean, I'm confident that our intention here is good. But I, I fear that if this is a opposed situation where there are two parties and someone has to be wrong to die, I don't see anyone else out here. Well, she said we would be judged. So if the bird finds us acceptable, perhaps we won't have to fight it. Oh, okay. One thing's for sure. Dark tidings are upon us. Absolutely. They frequently are. I could use a few less. Um, I'm going to give you a little bit of extra in information since you, you got a Tanguar, mm -hmm. um, Runa. Um, you know that this, this story has like been around for as like kind of as long as you can remember. Like your grandmother probably heard 
this story. Okay. And your great grandmother probably heard this story. Like it's been around for a while. Um, and uh, like the ghost bird kind of uh, ha- uh, uses a spear, which you would know. Okay. Which is like a strange thing that I feel like would make it stick in your memory. Yes. A bird with <laughs> yeah. a spear. How yes. does it, does it with the wings? Yeah. Um, does it hold it in its yeah. mouth? <laughs> um, and it's, it's in this area, it's seen as like judgment, but also kind of a protector. Okay. So it's feared, but it's also sort of, people are a little bit thankful for it as long as it doesn't hurt them. Uh, and it tends to keep people out of the marshlands, which a lot of them are thankful okay. for. Um, but it's one of those things Got where you're like, kind of like a fey spirit or something. You're like, mm-hmm. I'm really glad you're here helping things grow. I'm not going outside at night, though, because I don't want to mess with you and I don't want to upset you. Well, please stay over there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We tell all yeah. our children, don't go out at night or the ghost bird could get you. Yeah, exactly. 100%. <laughs> Oof. Okay. Um, you know... I think my grandmother told me a story about this. It must be the same one. It would be very strange for a different ghost bird to have a spear. A spear? Yes. That was not in the book that I read. Well, it definitely has a spear, according to, well, family legend. Um, But the good news is uh, that it was both judge and protector in the story I heard. Oh. All right. I think Hanar eyes, sorry, I'll get it right. Baron deer yeah. up and down for feathers. <laughs> <laughs> like, mm, spear wielding ghost bird shows up in the swamp, eh? <laughs> Nobody said if it's a shape shifting bird. <laughs> mm, just quietly, just a quiet glance. <laughs> I think uh, Baron Deer notices, and it feels to him like um, the same look that the dog gives. Him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. All right, very good. Um, uh, should we keep watch? I... I think so. We could take turns. That way we can make dinner and finish making camp. Yes. Um, I'll take first watch. All right. Well, just someone wake me when it's my turn. Um, And I think I'll find kind of like uh, something a little bit above ground to post up on um, with my sword that glows in the presence of ghosts. Nice. Very good. (laughs) Uh, Oh, yeah. They met a ghost and they got cool stuff earlier. So cool. They've got weird stuff. We have ghost stuff. Yeah. Yay. We've met two ghosts. Mm -hmm. One of them. A good one and a bad one. Yeah. Yeah. But I can't believe we're about to fight a ghost bird and we left the ghostly bird cage. Second bird related ghost. <laughs> uh, two out of three. <laughs> Only one of them I made up. The other one really <laughs> made up. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So, yeah, you uh, go ahead and start. Who takes first watch? All right. So, I'm going to have you roll scan. Okay. Speaking of dogs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're right at home, so maybe didn't hear there were dogs barking outside. Sorry. <laughs> we can hear it, but I don't think you can. Swamp but... dogs. Swamp dogs. Ranyar is here in spirit. Otters are no more dogs, spirits. Right? No more spirits. Oh, no. Oh, well. So if I roll favored, do I have to take the higher number if it's a bad number? <laughs> Um, what do you mean? Is it, a, is it an I? Yeah. Oh, then no. That that would count as a one. Oh, we got another one. Okay. Yeah, so the higher would be the other one. Okay, great. Fantastic. Um, uh, so I succeed. Okay. Nothing bad. Okay. But nothing spectacular. Um, yeah, no, you see, nothing strikes you as particularly odd. It's a swamp. It has a whole bunch of strange sounds. There's random splashes and... Things scurrying about um, that might be otters, it might be other animals, it might be something watching you, who knows? Like, okay, but because of the fog, it's a little hard to tell. Okay, so you just have a plethora of little noises about, um, but nothing that's like seems to be coming close to you or attacking you or anything like that. 
normal swamp noises. Yes, normal swamp noises. But it is uh, amazing how noisy a swamp can be. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. I think near the end of your watch, Erland comes and brings you a plate oh. to tag you out. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Erland. Of course. Are you taking next watch? I can do it. It's nice and dry up on this side Good, of this log. Everything here is wet. It's so damp. It's very wet. Mm. All right. Please roll scan for me. Oh, okay. Here we go, guys. Rolling dice. We're going to see how this goes. Tonight. It always goes so well for Ireland. I know. <laughs> What's your no elf I see? Normal, Nothing ever. Normal elven skills. Totally terrible at them. <laughs> Absolutely do not succeed. <laughs> right. Nope, super loud swamp. Nothing is nearby. I you think he sits on the log and fully puts his foot down thinking, oh, my boot will stop the water. The boot does not stop the water. And before he can actually get into the flow of being on watch, he realizes that his boot is full of swamp water. Ooh. It's so annoying. Yes. And distracting. Yes. So you don't notice anything else. Correct. Okay. And like a frog. Yeah. <laughs> Just hanging in the side of the boot. Yep. <laughs> I had pretty good frog noises. Oh, that's pretty good. good. Pretty good. Yeah. Go me. <laughs> Learning all, all sorts of new things about my vocalizations in this campaign. New <laughs> skill. <laughs> new skill. Frog noise. Um, okay, who takes next watch? I guess I'll go. Okay. Um, I think when we switch off, Baron Deer just has a big smile and is like, ah, Swamp is such a wonderful environment, don't you think? Um... I prefer water separate from land. Oh, I love it here. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, this log is apparently dry, except if you put your foot right there. It's the in-between states of dry and not dry that the swamp embodies. It uh, <sighs> makes me feel quite at home. Fascinating. Anything interesting on your watch? I found a frog. Oh. Yes, they, they they are here in in the swamp. You, we can hear them right now. Yes. Um, would you mind if I um wrote a few things down, um, just about our conversation and things like that? I'm just keeping <laughs> records for myself. Oh, by all means. Wonderful. Um, have a lovely watch. Um, beware of the frogs. Thank you. I will. Bernard <laughs> goes off, and <laughs> when he's sufficiently by himself, he just. Well, I think that went very well. <laughs> and I am going to roll my... Scan. Scan. Okay, so that's 2 plus this, target number 16. And I got 5, 9, 10, 11, 12. No. That's hard. Yeah, <laughs> that's it's, yeah, it's tough. It's tough. What's your... What's the... Um, My target number is 16. I rolled a 12. Oh, okay. Yeah, wow. Okay. Um, that is the, the 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 number thing we started with. That's a big mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. Uh, you just reduce the target we, numbers by two. Okay. Yeah. Just reduce all your target numbers by two okay. because the the rule book says to start with a certain number when you calculate all the skills. Um, but the internet has recommended if you want to jump in and actually succeed more often, you start at a slightly lo no, uh, lower number. Got it. So we okay. we did that when we started the campaign, and I'd forgotten to give you a heads up about that. Sorry. We're on heroic mode. Yeah. Okay. Basically. <laughs> yeah. Did you still not make it? Uh, well, yeah, I still did not make okay, it. I that's got okay. It. Well. Um, all right. So, uh, yeah, you also see such a lovely evening in the swamp. Mm -hmm. It's so nice to be like, out in nature and this mix of wet and dry land and like just all these things. And uh, you are not aware of anything. I think he, uh, Behringer starts singing to himself, just really, like, off-key, oh. so, like, kind of an off-key baritone. Okay. Like, whoop, 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 just stopping <laughs> and seeing if no anybody notices, and sort of walking around, <laughs> being loud. Very nice. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I right. think Erlen probably picks it up, <laughs> but doesn't say anything. Oh, just no. can hear it on the oh, wind. No. <laughs> Even worse. <laughs> now it's meta cringe. <laughs> Extra things to add to the notes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Mm. Well, seems we've survived through most of the night. Yes. Oh. Oh. Well, cheers. Best cheers. of. Have a good watch. 
and uh, I'll reach down and pull out my torch, mm -hmm. click it to light it, and plant it sort of in the, the dirt next to me where I sit down on a rock. Okay. Uh, yeah, here we go. Oh, uh, I'm going to make it, but with an eye and a tengwar. Okay. That'll kind of balance it. Whoa. Uh, <laughs> I, have three, I have three dots in yeah. the hand. So. Okay. Um, I'm going to have both of you scoot over that way just a little bit. See, that yeah. white line is the middle, just okay. so you guys share. Um, so on your watch, you've probably been watching for maybe an hour or two. Um, you can kind of tell the sky is, it's hard to tell here, but... It's just getting a little the, bit lighter. Yeah, yeah. And it's that super filtered light. So it's just barely like starting to change at all. So is the fog like higher than we are? It's kind of both. Okay. Like there's like a kind of a like a cloud cover. And then there's also like this deep fog that kind of goes up. You can kind of see the tops of the trees aren't as affected by it, but it's definitely really thick when like gotcha. down where we are. Cool, cool. Um and so you're there, and as you're sitting there, you hear um, just kind of this this movement that's different than like what you've been hearing. Like up until now, it's like this kind of cacophony of like noises that don't have any rhythm to them. And out of out of kind of that, you notice this kind of this light, almost inaudible splash noise that is like at a regular pattern that sounds like something walking hmm. in water. Um, but very, almost silently. Like if you hadn't like been really on watch or really listening for something that was probably like, moving in water. Like somebody slowly putting their foot down into a puddle instead of... Yeah. Like, oh, that yeah. was very loud, sorry. It's okay. But yeah, like that yeah. sort of thing. Um, yeah. And like you would kind of picture like... Uh, like how a flamingo, when you see them like walk, they kind of pick up their feet and they put it down like carefully sure, sure. in the water. All right. And it's kind of like that. And the only reason you probably heard it is because it's starting to be that dawn time where animals are kind of sw swapping. Mm -hmm. Nocturnal animals are, are quieting, like, down, yeah, quieting yeah. down and the daytime animals haven't quite woken up. So it's very kind of quiet at that moment. Sure. And you just kind of hear this somewhat approaching. But I don't see anything in the torchlight yet. Not yet. Okay. Um, and you can kind of hear it, and it, it's almost like specifically avoiding. Like it's kind of in the kind of periphery of the torso. Hmm. I think I'd probably stand up mm -hmm. and take my axe and hit the stone three mm -hmm. times, like very rhythmically, mm -hmm. as a, like, hey, sort of begin to regain consciousness kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. And like, I'll just attempt to keep facing the noise. Okay. Uh, when you do that, the noise stops. Yeah, but wherever it was, that's what yeah, I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's no longer moving, or it has gotten on dry land. You're not sure which. And you're, you are all sleeping, or whatever you're doing at this moment, and you hear, like, this very clear clink, clink, clink of a dwarven hammer hitting stone. Oh. Runa is up. <laughs> Yeah, Erlen's not shortly behind. Okay. Baron Deer? Yeah, Baron Deer's getting up and uh, grabbing the spear. And I think I just quietly point in whatever direction I last heard it. Something unusual walking. All right. Um, my, is my sword glowing at all? It is not. Okay. Um... Can I, um, I look to Hanar mm -hmm. and I follow his gaze and, uh, I then look to Runa and raise my hand with a hold motion. And he very, very big circle gestures first to himself and then out in a big wide circle that he is going to kind of do a kind of walk around, but very elven quietly. Okay. Um, so I'd like to grab oh. my lovely ghost touch pouch Yes. and try and sneak out into the marshes. Okay, roll sneak. Berenger, are you okay with uh, 
with Erlen doing that? Are you kind of are you there and paying attention to these cues and? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Definitely an, an unsubtle mm -hmm. motion. Yes. Mm -hmm. So stealth, please. My fist full of dice. Whoa. Okay. Okay. We're having a weird roll night. Uh oh. I definitely succeed with a tanguar uh -huh. and an eye. An eye. <laughs> okay. Well, the eye again, like it counts as a one. It doesn't count as like a failure. The Gandalf rune is automatically a success, no matter what other dice you roll. But that just counts as a one, so it's not great. But it also, since you have Tanguar, like that kind of balances. Well, it what's out. a Tanguar? That's the uh, six. If you roll a six, it has the special little. Yeah. One. Got it. Okay. Basically, but any six. Yeah. Any it's six. a super okay. success if you roll a six. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Um, yeah, they had to make it in theme, so they named it like the after a letter. After a letter. After yeah. a lettering system. Yeah, sure. It's fine. Okay, whatever. If you roll alphabet, good job. <laughs> That's basically what it is. Um, all right. So uh, you go ahead and you you kind of disappear into the fog, um, as you are want to do. And um, as you're kind of going around, um, uh, the rest of you, like, just because you're all sitting and paying attention, you start hearing that kind of, like, splash. Not not splash even, but just, like, quiet, very, like, just slight disruption of the water. Um, and more what you're hearing, you're more hearing drips, like, when the foot is, like, picked up out of the water again. It's not, you're, it's like they're being so carefully put into the water, you're not hearing that. It's like when they come out of the water, there's, like, no way to avoid just a slight sound. Um, and if we'll switch to our combat screen. Yep. Okay. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> um, welcome to combat. Yeah. Right. Welcome to combat. So, um, <laughs> oh yeah, it's B A R R A N B I R. You get two lines. No, All right. touch down so it looks nicer. Come on. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I'm working on it. Okay. It's still going to be too long for these columns. No, it's, it's fine. Okay, it's fine. Okay. <laughs> um, so for those of you listening at home, we switched to our combat screen, which basically has the different stances. Um, it's been a hot minute since we did combat, so let's go over it just a little bit. Um, there's three main stances. Rearward stance means you're shooting arrows. You're far away, so you can't do direct melee combat. Forward stance, open stance, defensive stance despite their names, are more like aggressive, neutral, and defensive. So it doesn't actually mean you're farther away or closer. It just means you're fighting more aggressively or like being neutral or being more defensive so you're less likely to be hit. Um, and we will walk you through all of that. Um, if you get forward stance, you get an extra die to your attack rolls. If you're an open stance, it's just kind of neutral. You roll exactly what's on your street. For defensive stance, um, you... Uh, Get a minus one. Minus, yeah, a minus one die to your attacks, but you're more likely to uh, to defend. All right. Uh, and then, if you're forward stance, you're also more likely to be to hit. be hit. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Your enemies also get a plus one on you. Okay. Yep. Um, and uh, while you're rolling, there's a on your cheat sheet. Mm -hmm. There's a whole little section for combat down here that, that works through it. Okay. This is Kimmy's special little cheat sheet with like handwritten notes that I Xerox copied very fancy for you. It's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, if you can't yeah. read the handwriting, just ask. <laughs> um, uh, you also have, uh, you can always spend a hope. Also, you have a hope on your die on your sheet. You can spend a hope to get an extra die, but you have to do it before the roll. You can't be like, oh, I failed. I'm going to spend an extra hope. Yeah. Um, and we have fellowship points that we can that we can yeah, so no worry about that. Yep. Um, so first thing we're gonna do is figure out where everyone is. So let's start with Runa. Forward. Forward stand. Always. Okay. Erlin, are you doing? I'm in the back like okay, always. Rearward. Forward. <laughs> with arrows for life. Okay. I'm staying in the middle for this one. Okay. Oh. We haven't seen a thing yet. That's true. That's I can change it later. You but... can. You can. Yeah, you can change it every uh, every round if you want to as well. Um, I guess I'll be defensive. Okay. Do I have the shield? Okay. Good call. Hey, and we'll walk you through everything, so don't stress that. We're all good. Um, 
So basically what you're going to do is you will have a um, an attack specific for your weapon. Uh, can you point it out on the on for him oh, Dave, oh, oh, on your yeah, sheet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the number of dice you'll roll. Okay. Um, right. And same thing with your TN. All it's the same. Works the same for all the skills. Um, so yeah, you'll use your spear skill, and yeah. Okay. Should be good. Combat proficiency, technically. Uh, so what's going to happen is um, the three of you who are still in kind of the, the light of the torch. Uh, now I need dice. I forgot to get my dice. Out. Um, we'll say uh -oh. Hanar, because you're the one who placed the torch. Let's see how this goes. Oh. Um. Her things is that an O? Oh, like I'm about to get. No, up? it's yes. bad. Oh. Uh oh. <laughs> I mean, it's it's bad for the ghost bird. It's not bad for you. Oh. Oh. Uh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> I rolled like garbage. So congratulations. Um, out of the mist, kind of a little bit farther from where you heard the sound last, comes this spear. Oh. And it just flies and it like narrowly misses you and like embeds itself in the ground next to you. Hmm. Um, and then out of uh, kind of the mist right behind it comes uh, this figure that's like it's long spindly legs, um, like wrapped in like, like feathers. It's really hard to see kind of the shape of it because it's moving so fluidly and so quickly. Um, and it is... Uh, it, it almost seems to be like whether it's flow, like wings flowing or things like that. It's just it's just feathers, a ton of feathers. Um, yeah, and then uh, it grabs the spear and like disappears in the other direction. So it kind of does like this quick, like throws the spear, Ooh, comes retrieves it, and flies. Yeah. yeah, it's very, very fast. Uh, I think through the whole thing, Hannah's just sitting there with his axe, mm -hmm. like. The thing lands, he looks at it, then giant feather thing runs by, grabs the spear and runs off, and he's like, I probably should have tried to hit that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, we'll say that it um it's it it's still in sight. You can see it. It's staying like right at the edge of the torchlight, so it's a little bit hard to get a clear sight through it through the mist, but it's there and it's like ready to fight you. It's not hiding from you. It's sure, sure. Yeah. Uh I think I'd probably be like, I, I would probably say, uh, 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 bird of the swamp, <laughs> we have not come to disturb you. I'm sorry if you take offense at the old woman nailing a bird skull to the tree, but uh, we we are here to help with possibilities of, of darkness encroaching on your swamp territory. We don't want to hurt you, but we will defend ourselves. Um, there's like this low, like bird sound. Um, if you've ever heard, like, uh, at, at the Renaissance Fair, there's a lot of geese, and they are very, very pissy. So sometimes when you wake up in the morning in the tent there, they'd be like right next to your tent. And if you like accidentally spread and they didn't make this weird like, mm -hmm. like it's like a growl, but it's a bird noise through their nose. Mm -hmm. It's a beer where you get it. It's like that sort of noise that you hear. Shockingly, most of the geese are gone this year. I know. There's so much water too. Because there's a second time. lake. They all went over there. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of like, people there. We're not dealing with these loud costume wackos. Like, absolutely not. We're going to go over here to our new private lake. Um, <laughs> Exclusive lake. Yeah. VIP only. Yeah. VIG. VIG. Very goose, important yes, goose. Very goose. <laughs> yeah. I like it. Sorry. Right. Mm. So there's not like another response, but it's just very clearly a. Like oh, growly sound. I gave it a chance. Mm -hmm. That's that's all I meant to do. And then you kind of see a glint of the spear as it like kind of sw like there's like kind of a swoosh of feathers and it like, like how tall is it like relatively? Um it's definitely taller than like a human. Oh. Um 
yeah, so it's uh it's probably like nine feet tall. Oh, crazy. Okay. okay. Yeah. Now part of that is like very long spindly legs. So it's not like pure muscle. It's a little bit of like it's a ghost. None oh. of it's muscle. Yeah. <laughs> well that yes. But, it, <laughs> but I'm trying to give you like a yes, yes. there's like a, a spindly bird leg situation happening, but it also makes it very quick. Sure. That's cool. Okay. Um, I hate to keep asking this, but is my sword glowing? It is yet? not. Okay, so I think Runa calls out, not an actual ghost. <laughs> Accurate. <laughs> That's annoying. Well, that means we can take it down. Ghosts are hard to... She makes a chopping motion. <laughs> um, let's see. So it's on the edge of the firelight, yeah? Mm -hmm. How close are we to it? Um, I'm gonna say there's like a like a 15 foot kind of glowy radius of uh Hannah's magic torch. And okay. uh Ghost torch, ghost torch. Uh, we're gonna have to tell you all about the ghost stuff. <laughs> um, and it's just kind of barely outside of that. Um, okay. So give me kind of a picture here um, using theater of the mind because that's what we use. Um, so in the center, there's the torch that's planted. Mm -hmm. You're still out. I think Aaron? from Erlen's point of view, he sees his three companions. Uh, in the firelight, very well lit, and then just the silhouette of this bird, mm -hmm. this kind of mass of feathers with a spear, um, like straight on. Like if he's looking at the torch, he sees the bird and not the torch. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'm. Berdur is hewing pretty closely to the torch with uh, his spear and shield in hand, and just sort of tracking the entire situation as best as he can see. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I'm I'm standing there kind of dead center next to the torch on the stone. Okay. Like Um I think when Erland went to do his circuit, I probably would have moved out just a little bit towards where we last heard the sound, mm -hmm. so wherever that puts me in relationship to the bird now. Okay. So that would be uh kind of almost cross across the circle. So you'd be a little bit past um where Hanar and Baradir are. Okay. Opposite side from Baradir, sorry. Opposite side from the yeah. bird? Okay. Yeah, kind of like because you were kind of headed towards it and then it did its like flurry of the It went the other way. You. Okay. Um so it's on there. And as it's in kind of in the light a little bit, it almost looks like um instead of like a head, it's got like a bird skull. Oh cool. So, yeah. Nice. That's wicked. So, yeah. It's hard to quite tell, but it's just like this bone colored white and there's like a beak, but it's definitely like, there's not feathers on that part. Foul spectral bird. Um, and if no one's doing anything, it's going to attack you again. Um, I think <laughs> seeing that it threw a spear, yeah. Erland would, because he went with his bow out and ready to go, I think he would get a shot off okay. from way out. All right, go ahead and roll. And the way it goes is, it's like people who are farthest away, and then it goes, uh, wait, forward stands. Yeah, it goes yeah. forward stands. Forward, open. Open, so then it rolls backwards, okay. which is why we have the cute little chart to help Got us it. keep track of where everyone is. I'm always last. Yeah, you're always last. <laughs> so we're going to give you, we're actually going to have everyone go for before you go then. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. So we're going to have Runa go first, and she's okay. in forward stance. Yeah, I think... Having seen it just throw a spear at Hanar and it being on the opposite side, she's like, right then, <laughs> makes a beeline for it. Okay. <laughs> um, let's see. And you can do, basically you can do two um, uh, actions during combat. You can do a main action and a kind of like a secondary action. Mm -hmm. Secondary action is like taking off a piece of armor if you've gotten too tired, which <laughs> is a thing that happens a lot. Yep. <laughs> Um, so your main action, I think, for this time would be to, uh, kind of run across the circle. Yeah. And, uh, yep. So that'll be your thing for this one. Okay. Um, secondary. Oh, well, I think I already have my sword drawn. Mm -hmm. uh, try to locate someone on the battlefield. I think I know where everyone is, so. Okay. Yeah. 
I'm just going to get close to the bird. All right, nice. Do your thing. Yeah. And look scary. Sounds good. All right, Hanar, next. Well, uh, I gave it a shot, and it growled. Mm -hmm. Not a good sign. Here I go. All right. So I'm just going to hustle towards it and try and just Paul Bunyan chop one of those legs. Okay, I'm going to say since you're like half at like half the length closer, so you have enough, you can get close enough to it and take a swing in the same turn. Fantastic. So take a swing at it. Um, it has a parry of three. Oh. Three? Jesus. It's very fast. Well, isn't that bad? A parry of three? It's bad for you. Yeah. Makes it hard to wound. Oh, but not hard to hit. Yeah, you may, you add that to your target number. Oh, oh, sure, but like my parry is 17. Yeah. Right, but that's your parry for avoiding being hit. Yeah, so my target number for something to hit me is 17. Yeah. So it doesn't that doesn't so affect it. So remember It's for, adding 3 to, to your, what to your my hit DM. target. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, got, I got this. It's been a few minutes. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> and to be fair, most of the things we fought have been like a big thing that that doesn't move yeah, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Big hit point sink. Yep. Essentially. Yes. That is going to be real bad for this bird. Oh, yeah? Okay. Uh, so I hit my number mm -hmm. with its added amount with wow. two Tengwars. Oh, 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 nice. No. Okay. okay. So it's a bad day to be a swamp bird. <laughs> uh, so when you get the Tengwars, mm -hmm. you can add extra things. Okay. Uh, They're listed on here, too. Yeah. On the, on so the cheat sheet. Like heavy blow, parry, pierce. Shield oh, thrust. Yeah, yeah. Those are like extra deals. And each one you get, you can choose one of those yeah. bonus things. Yeah. Okay. Pierce is like brutal. Brutal, uh, like really important. Um, and then uh, that one and the extra damage uh, are the best ones usually to pick. Uh, mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, I, I guess I'll just do a heavy blow twice. Ooh, okay. Oh, okay. Um, bye, bird. So uh, my damage would be five plus six is eleven, so that's twenty-two. Oh. Uh, plus the base amount, okay. which would be uh, five, so twenty-seven. Cool. <laughs> Fine. Wow. Cool. That's rude amounts of damage. <laughs> Rude. <laughs> <laughs> Heather spent like ten sessions doing like three damage. Yeah, <laughs> three damage. So I'll take it. Oh yeah, yeah. that's fine. Incredible. Just so, I told you I was going for a leg. You did. I'm gonna take it. You like swing, <laughs> and there's um like this like loud snapping sound. Um, at, but it's different than you're used to. It sounds like wood snapping. Okay. This is a crone on stilts. <laughs> um, and uh, there's kind of like this tumble um, as like what sort of becomes clear is more of like a humanoid shape, like rolls like very agilely, like like recovers and like jumps off of these stilts that it, that they're wearing and rolls um, and like recovers themselves in like this thick um, like set of armor that is covered with feathers but also like these large like it's sort of like a cloak but it's like attached in ways that make it um so it doesn't really hinder movement sure. um and there's like a a large like skull like mask that's being worn that also looks like it has part of a helm in the back um and they kind of spin like incredibly well trained like with their spear um even though like they've been pretty seriously injured um, and then they, they, you just kind of hear that, that growl, that bird growl sound again. And then they kind of like flee into the darkness. Like well, they, they kind of like look for a moment and they kind of spin and then like, do I see where they go? I mean, they go into the, the mist. If you want to follow, you may. Because I'm out there literally trying to keep oh. an eye on them. Oh, then yeah, 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 yeah. You, you you can probably, if you're like actively working to track them, yeah. yes. Because I have a shot ready, so I'm looking at exactly where they're going the moment they turn. I think Erlen just follows. Yeah. Okay, you can totally do that. Great. Um, I'm going to have you roll hmm. hunting. <laughs> or let me see if there's one that you might be better at. 
It's okay if it is. I mean, uh, stealth would also work because that's foreshadowing another as well. Okay. You're you're very kind. <laughs> well, no, it, it says like right there. It says hide, move quietly, or shadow another. So I'm not actually just being nice. I actually read the thing and it would count. <laughs> like a special proficiency with it. Okay. I don't remember. What I'd have to try really hard to fail a stealth check. Mm-hmm. Um, but did you? Yeah. No. Oh. I actually remember. <laughs> I'm glad that you asked <laughs> because I could mm-hmm. and do frequently, but this time I made it for days. Oh, excellent. Okay. Yeah, you are very able to to track this being. Um, you get the feeling they are so good, like almost as good as you at stealth. Um, but because they've been so injured, like yeah. they're having trouble moving quite as quietly as they normally would. But even as grievously injured as they are, like they're very clearly limping. Um, we're gonna say it's like their right leg, like they went by and you just like, Phew. um, and um, but they are moving through this swamp like almost as quickly as the otters were. Are uh, they headed a familiar direction? Uh, it doesn't seem that way, okay. Um, they're headed kind of uh, definitely not towards Swan Town, like, like deeper into the swamp. I think I let them go, and I just see them. I want to see if I can see any detail of who they are, like what kind of humanoid they might be, mm-hmm. what um, if they're a crone wearing mm-hmm. a cloak, that kind of thing. It doesn't seem like it. Like, like they are tall. Okay. Like the stilts were like four feet high, but this person is five to six feet tall. Okay. Um, seems human-ish. Like the just the build is like a a fit human of some type. It, Bipedal. Yeah. Y- yeah, and you can human see, height. Yeah. Um, and now that you're following them, like they're kind of using the spear to help them with their leg. They do have hands. You can see. Um, and they do seem somewhat aware that they probably are being followed. Um, but they're they're going as quickly as they can rather than being incredi- more stealthy. Okay, I let them I let them go because mm-hmm. I don't want to chase them all the way to probably where the sleeper is. Mm-hmm. Uh, but... And return to everyone. Okay. Out of character, so did not mean to hog all the murder. No, I know. <laughs> but uh, the dice yeah. said what they said. Yeah. <laughs> the dice made that decision, <laughs> yeah. not you. But uh, yeah, I, I think he's probably like looks at his axe and it's not covered in blood, and like looks at the remaining stick leg in the swamp water and like a little disappointed. Aww. <laughs> I think he wanted to see another fantastical thing, not mm-hmm. a charlatan. Yeah. But right. uh, I'm totally going over and pulling that skull off the tree. Okay. If I can reach it, I don't know how tall the crone was exactly. She's not very tall. We she said she straightened up, so she did, but like she's still very small. Okay. <laughs> like she's probably like maybe five feet tall total, straightened up, and she's a okay. little bit smaller than that usually. Very oh. small. So yeah, I'm just gonna go over and like manhandle the skull off. Okay. Uh, if you want to switch us back to the oh, oh yes, yeah, indeed. A one and done combat round. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> I was like, wow. Three parry and they have a bunch of might and it'll be great. They're so fat. Oh, I was concerned. Yeah, it was past ten. I was a little bit too. I was like, yeah, okay. I was like, great. This is gonna go. Yeah, specifically a, yeah. waited so you had four people to fight this thing, and I guess we didn't even need <laughs> one. Good job. We needed one Hanar. One Hanar <laughs> <laughs> and a lucky roll. All right, so everything seems like kind of back to normal. This the the light is a little bit more spread out, even though it's still very diffused. You'd guess like it's starting to be like regular morning time. It's probably like about six or so. And around this time is when Erland returns. Like he's gone for a moment. Yeah. Um, and then comes back and just kind of points the direction. They did travel that way. They were very injured. That was a very good hit, Hannah. I, I'm as surprised as anyone. Well done. Pleased, but quite surprised. Maybe not carrying around a large pearl is very helpful for your fighting skills. <laughs> That's probably true. I hadn't thought of that. And it was the first fight in a while that I haven't been preoccupied with that pearl. Hmm. Either being hit with it or <laughs> lugging it around. Well, I hope that it fleeing means that we passed whatever 
judgment it must have been passing. I hope so. We survived the night, so I suppose that's step one. Maybe that means we're correct. True. And if it is a protector of the swamp, then I'm glad it didn't force us to do more damage to it. It didn't head back to Swantown. I'm wondering if it went towards our actual quarry here, of whatever the sleeper is. It also didn't head back to the Circle of Trees. No. no. Okay. It does make sense why um, Glorfindel didn't get this far. On his own. Hmm. I suppose we wait to see when the crones awake. Yes. We found a pearl once. <laughs> it was very large. I'm not just talking about a pearl the size of, you know, a pea. A basketball pearl. Oh. <laughs> that, that is quite large. A good shot earlier. Yes. It was actually in a horrible fish monster um, that we had to fight. That was um, actually doing quite a bit of harm to your people. Oh. Up in Enuminous. Enuminous. Well, uh, that's qu quite the distance away. We are quite well traveled. Um, at some point, you'll have to come and visit us at Creek's Crossing. Maybe join us there if you want to continue to actually hear our music, for one. <laughs> You might have heard of Creek's Crossing. It's like a little podunk <laughs> backwoods like village that's past Bree up kind of near the mountains that's like known for timber and like nothing else. Yes, I think I've seen that name on a map somewhere once. It was on a map. <gasps> it is on a map. Oh, we'll have to tell uh, uh, Mayor Tuberton. Uh, yes, he'll quite enjoy that. The font was very small. But seems correct. Um, the two maps I think I've ever seen it on, it was um, small even in the writing of my people. Right. Do, do you often fight animal-themed beasts? Oh, my armor is actually made out of these um, large wolf-like creatures that were on fire, uh, but like under the fur was on fire. It's very warm. You, do you in, want to touch internal it? Fire. Yeah. yeah. It also makes very good books. You would have heard of, of burned beasts, which are like these huge wolf-like creatures that are like of the darkness and like burn with a fire like within. Oh. They're very evil and like usually travel in packs. And it's kind of like, damn, okay, it's a little badass that they fought and killed one or if not more of them. Oh, it's quite impressive. Your armor. Thank you. Yeah, I'm very pleased with how it turned out. You said it made books? Oh, it, and Erlen pulls out a book bound in very similar looking leather. Oh, you made a book out. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Keeps the from being flammable. Um, I'm hoping to not, and he kind of puts it back away in his very large sack where you see there are other books um, to keep it away from all of the wet. Oh, yes. Yeah, I, I suppose I see why that would be a problem. Yes. Oh, go ahead. Is that why you don't like the swamp? I'm from the sea. This is too much water on the land. But I like that. <laughs> this is the first swamp I've ever visited. Teeming with life. I came very close to the swamp once on the far side um, and avoided it. And I was right. <laughs> so would you visit again? It seems mildly delightful so far. The people in Swan Town were very kind. They were lovely. And these crones seem all right. I wouldn't want to be attacked by a artificial bird man again, but no, preferably relatively not. inoffensive. Hopefully that's a one-time occurrence when you enter the swamp, though. As they're talking about the bird costume, Erlen goes and picks up the remains of the stilts and wants to look at how they're crafted. Yeah. Um, very well crafted, but now that you look at it, it's, um, they're kind of, they're a bit rough hewn. Mm -hmm. So even though they are very sturdy and work well and like clearly designed by someone who knows the swamp well, because this is one of the reasons the, the ghost bird is able to move so quickly through water mm -hmm. and such things, um, very clearly patterned on like cranes and birds of that nature that, that can very quickly move through the swamp. 
um, and also like it gives them some height advantage and and speed advantage. Um, they are like they're they're not elvish design, I'll say. Um, but they could be. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm hearing is, yeah. stay out of swamp, be on cool wood stilts. Yes, that's what Erland is taking away from looking yeah. at these it's and is smart. going to scoop them up. It's legit. <laughs> Hanar's prophecy of the really big elf is coming true. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just Erland on stilts. Yes. Um, are there any feathers that left here that fell off of the costume? Yeah, some of them. Okay. Um, they seem to be a... Uh, they're kind of worn. Like, they've okay. been, like, part of this for uh, for quite some time. Or, like, once something... Like, uh, similar to the feathers you saw on the mare of Swantown that mm -hmm. have kind of just been worn over time because they've been part of an outfit for so long. Mm -hmm. These have a similar look to them, um, but and they seem to be from all like different types of birds. But when you saw it, it was very clearly patterned in a way to replicate an actual bird mm -hmm. with like longer feathers on like the wing parts. Okay. So whoever designed this very clearly knew about birds and was trying to mimic their look and movement and feel very, very clearly. Awesome. So it's not so much like decorative of as like a very specific design to give the appearance of a bird. Okay. I'm going to collect the feathers okay. in case we need some bribes later. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Anything else? Erilyn's going to sit and study the stilts and eventually, if we're here for a very long time, probably try and repair the one that Hanar slashed very wonderfully. Okay. Um, nothing seems to be happening, so... We don't have a hobbit to instigate breakfast, so I don't know what happens to all of you now. <laughs> what I think do you do? <laughs> without the hobbit here, Runa in okay. instigates breakfast. She's like, well, we got woken up early, and we had to sort of fight a thing. Now I'm hungry. Wait, what type of breakfast that would they instigate usually? Um. Well, our chef has gone back to <laughs> the Shire, unfortunately. So, But they were like wonderful full breakfasts? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, so yeah. So I think in this moment, Baron Deer has, uh, I don't know, dried fruits and, <laughs> and oh. jerky and stuff, and just like you know, not quite as as good. Very very functional food. Mm -hmm. Back to our forest salsa. I yeah, think. we made forest <laughs> salsa once. It was good. Erland's mm -hmm. forgotten food exists. Mm -hmm. They are in crafting land. Okay. Mm. Very good. Um, and will you roll crafterman? <laughs> the smile. <laughs> All the crap. The dice are trying it. Uh oh. Yeah, the dice have been moody tonight. They're trying so hard. Really, I can art tonight. I just make it. Okay. I hit my target Ooh. number. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, you're able to uh, kind of um, repair this, not in a way that you probably couldn't like fight on it again. No. But it'll definitely support your weight. Um, and like you put like like you kind of drill into um, each piece of wood, and you put like a rod there in between, so it kind of slips in, like you're making minis or something. Yeah. yeah. And um, so that gives it some extra strength, and you're able to bind it on top of that. So yeah, you now have a pair of stilts, so your fancy elfie do not Yay. have to get wet. As you guys are making breakfast behind you, you just see Erland like prop himself up as well as he can, and suddenly there's a like seven and a half foot tall elf. I think Runa has made you a plate from whatever breakfast that we're making. I figure you, like, bring out your rations and we, like, combine forces to make a breakfast spread as best we can. Mm -hmm. um, and hand you a plate up. <laughs> I'll come down. I forgot. Sorry. And Erlen <laughs> kind of, like, very awkwardly lowers, trying to find a way to, like, balance and come down gently. It's not pretty. You see very clearly uh, that Erland is not the most coordinated person you've ever met. Oh, on stilts. <laughs> and now on stilts. Yes. Excellent. Very good. Um, I am going to give that to you as an elf, though. Like, you might not be coordinated for an elf. Yeah, for an elf. For most other beings, you're very, very coordinated. Um, all right. Um, after some breakfast is made, um, you hear, like, the, like, the thump sound again. And uh, then... Uh, uh, the crone appears once more, and uh, she's got like a little bit of like a 
like Snaggletooth kind of grin. Oh, it looks like you survived. Well done. Uh, you are indeed worthy of going to the lair of the sleeper. Would you like to go? Yes. <laughs> Very good. I think Hannah hands back the skull. Oh, like... thank you. I usually have to pull it down myself. That's very kind. She's going to stick it in one of her, like, plethora of, like, owls, like, like hood, like, just, like, all this fabric that's kind of wrapped around her and kind of rotting as well. Carolyn holds up the, the stilts. Is it all right if, um, do you need these back? I do not. Wonderful. She looks a little awkward and, like, not <laughs> sure what she's supposed to do now. <laughs> Carolyn just puts them back with his bow. <laughs> this is an unexpected situation. Very well. If you are friends with the artificial bird ghost, you may want to offer them some level of first aid or medical care. No, the ghost has need of us. They will make themselves known. Very good. If they do not, and they are dispatched, then they will be replaced. Oh. I suppose ghost bird is a more of a title. Oh, it's a fast anything. way to become a ghost. Yeah, for some. For some, they do it for many years. All are eventually replaced. It is a great honor to be chosen as the ghost bird of the swamps. They seem quite formidable. Indeed, many are many train to take on the mantle and forsake all else to protect this area. It is something that is a uh, an ageless tradition, and they are trusted with the wisdom and might to keep things right in Swanfleet. Then I shall return these to them. Well, you might want to keep those. I'm not sure it would help much with their fighting. All right, then. I will. That didn't take very much convincing. <laughs> well, if you're able to take out the ghost birds quite that quickly, then it means you are formidable indeed. Perhaps you may be successful. Yeah, come then. Come, come. Is quickly. The, is the sleeper something we should be prepared to fight? Do you know what awaits us? Indeed, I do. But... The wisdom gained from experience is often a deeper wisdom than that which is just told to you. Fair enough. She kind of snickers and giggles. <laughs> She's like amused at her own like <laughs> caginess. Like, <laughs> <clears throat> I will take you to the palace. There is a uh, quite a lot there. Palace. Well, Runa's eyes light up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it used to be. Long time ago. Long before even my days. It is mostly sunk into the marsh now. But once a time, it was great indeed. Fascinating. Huh. Who lived there? Well, it was... It was built by the dwarves, or Celebrimbor. In ages past. Oh. There's a... She pauses for a moment, like, thinking. There are many... Unique aspects to the palace. But it was to guard his greatest treasure. Kai's eyes are, like, <laughs> popping <laughs> out of his skull right now. <laughs> All right. Uh, floor update. <laughs> Celebrimbor was like one of the greatest elven like creators and smiths known. Made pots, uh, Sauron, how to make the rings. Made the three rings of the elves. Wait, uh, it's an elven palace or a dwarven palace? Uh, built by the dwarves for Celebrimbor. Oh, okay, okay. So okay. who was like one of the greatest elven crafts or crafters to ever live. He's like a basically the Middle Earth equivalent of an international sensation yeah. because he was so gifted. Like just 
even among the elves, like like raised up as the greatest creator and smith ever. Um, and in fact, through trickery was was like accidentally taught Sauron how to make the rings of power because Sauron was not talented enough to do it by himself. Yeah. So. Um, and still it didn't besmirch his name enough for the elves to not absolutely still love him. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this is Celebrimbor's greatest treasure. That's a thing. Great. Like a big thing. Greatest treasure. <laughs> Celebrimbor. <laughs> <laughs> Also, one of the most fun elven names to say. I, I love him. Say. <laughs> Hella Britain poor. <clears throat> yeah. So, like, she's going to start, like... Is he in the family tree? He, Hella Britain Yeah. Uh, in the family tree of... Uh, oh, um... Lord... Uh, about Fanor? No, your your boss. Uh, uh, no, oh, you're no. talking about Kierden now. Kierden now. Oh. They're not related. Okay, no. you imply yeah. that elves often share consonant beginnings. Yes, they do. In family, Kierden is a special one. He's largely not related to anyone. Yeah, ah. that's why he's got a beard. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> great. Yeah, he's important, but like not as important. Well, yeah, I, I just yeah. it could be in a family line. That's that's all yeah. I meant. Yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, the because obviously a good crafter and smith. Probably also had a beard. His <laughs> that's dwarven <laughs> large logic, right? I there. <laughs> love this. Um, so uh, Mother Windrith is now walking very slowly. Walking and one, two, three. Oh, the walking. worst kind of escort quest. <laughs> yep. oh my God. Just slightly too slow for us to run and hustle, yep. but too the fast for us thing. to walk at a normal speed. I died the other day. Someone uh, I was in Discord was. Was joke and they were like motherhood, like in the world's like most like the real world like longest or, uh, or something. I messed it up. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. But it's like the the world's longest escort quest, and I was like, oh, I feel that in my soul. Oh no! <laughs> uh, but it was very fun. Um, so yes, yeah, she starts walking in the swamp very slowly. Yeah, it's, you're spot, getting we're Yep. Yes, <laughs> we're taking a slow meander through the swamp. Yes, you are. Erland, um, the king of the meander, yes. is actually like trying to go faster now. Yeah. <laughs> um, and at some point, um, why don't you roll a die for me, Runa? Just uh, if it's odds, you get Lord Paddlefoot. If it's evens, you get Lady Swimmer or something. Uh, odds. Odds. Okay. So, Good friend. Friend. yeah. So, like, you kind of notice, like, this, like, ripple in the water as you're kind of walking incredibly slow. And you're all trying to be polite. But it's just like. I feel like Runa is making conversation with her about herbs yeah. and, like, healing stuff. Yeah. Which is not helping the pace. <laughs> like, she gets a little distracted sometimes and, like, stops to think for a moment. Like, um, I think that the <laughs> moon mushrooms are better for that. And, like, pauses to talk to you for a moment. And you're just like, Talk yeah. and walk. Talk and walk. Yeah. And so, like, there's just, like, this, like, ripple of the water. And, like, Lord Paddlefoot's, like, just floating. It's an otter, by the way. Mm -hmm. Floating on his back, kind of, like, looking at you all and kind of, like, laughing. <laughs> like, there's a little bit of, like, an elf or a, a, an otter, like, <laughs> <laughs> it's going to take you guys a while. You're going to do the sleeper? It's going to be a while. <laughs> Lord Paddlefoot, what do you, um know of this sleeper um what i told you before it is a very large right. thing of stone like a stone like like tree, a tree but not yes. a tree and also big enough for you to go inside and in the mud yes he did very well yes. and erland is going to pull like the tiniest bit of gold wire out of his Ooh. pocket and hand it to him. Oh, like he, he jumps out of the water and like does the little otter run up to you and like grabs it and holds it. Oh, and then like starts like, like spinning it into like a, like a bracelet. Oh, just jeweler's wire. <laughs> yeah. Would you like me to take you? I can take you faster than the little one, the little tall one, old tall one. I can help. She's oh, quite useful in my eyes, but I would uh, much appreciate it. That would be lovely. We wouldn't want to take up all of Mother Windrith's day, of course. Or our own. 
birthday presents. <laughs> yeah. Mother Wonder looks like a little annoyed, but also like a little relieved. She kind of like grabs her back. Well, if you'd rather go with the otter, that is fine by me. Well, we just wouldn't want to trouble you with such a long walk. Master Dwarf, I'm older even than you. I'm not a fool. I can tell that you are in a hurry and do not want to wait for my old bones, and that is fine. I have better things to do with my sisterhood. We thank you for the safe passage in your land. Well, I can give you safety from my sisters because you've proven yourself through battle combat. Uh, the swans, I can do nothing about. But uh, good luck with them if you see them. She's gonna reach like her 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 cane has a bunch of feathers on it. She's gonna pull one like long white one, which is like probably like a little bit longer than a foot, and like hand it to Runa. Oh, thank you. Put it under your pillow. And then she just turns around, Ooh. and what should be a dramatic exit, very slow. <laughs> <laughs> she continues to. I it's, love her. It's that She's awkwardness so of saying goodbye to your friends, and right. then you realize you both parked in the same direction. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly you're the like, same. oh, oh ha, all yeah. right. The Lord Paddlefoot's like, um, are we ready? Yes. Okay. Um, I would like to, uh, Barandir. This is Lord Paddlefoot. Ah, uh, greetings. You were with Lady Swift Swim. Hmm. But he's with you now. Hmm. He hasn't paid me. Oh. Right, uh, uh, something shiny, <laughs> um, uh, perhaps, uh, and Berenger pulls off something distinctively not shiny, maybe like a twig or something, <laughs> that's all he has, oh like, God. uh, shiny, it's with a little bit of polish, yes, it can be shiny, look, it's very fun. I live in a swamp. With many trees. Bigger trees. Why would I want a tiny bit of a tree? Oh, uh, right. Um, he kind of glares at the rest of you like, you really? You brought me this? <laughs> well, I guess you don't need to find the sleeper. Uh, he like feigns walking away. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. And uh, Baron Deer takes off his knife and maybe cuts like a buckle from one of his shoes or something like that. Oh. It's like, uh, oh. Here. Mm. You're very welcome. This is acceptable payment. I should hope so. You like, kind of like... My boot is very loose now. You should carry more shiny things. <laughs> Seems like a bad plan to wear things that you need like that on your feet. You should just get tougher feet. Wise words, Lord Paddlefoot. Shall we? Yes, no, we will. We shall. In fact, shall. Yes. We will shall. And then, like, starts jumping. We right? shall, will go. How big is the buckle? Is it big enough to, like, go over his head? Um, Think about it like that big. Oh, okay. All right. He's going to stick it over, like, his little, like, otter shoulder. Oh, oh goodness. It's an otter epaulet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it kind of is, like, hanging. <clears throat> and he looks very important. And then kind of scutters off. And does the same thing that... Like, it seems like the otters are want to do go very quickly, and then, oh, yeah, I have to wait for the tall thing. And wait. And get distracted. Oh, you're close. Okay. And then they lead, uh, yeah. <laughs> and they lead you for quite some time. Um, and uh, so eventually you get to what is a very deep part of the swamp, and you start to see over, even over the trees, the top of... Uh, what looks like it used to be a very beautifully designed white tower that is just barely picking up over the the tops of some of the taller, older trees. White, like mar marbly white, or white, like white, like or stone. Like it's hard to tell, but like mm. it, like it is fine stone. Whether it's it may not be marble exactly, um, but you, especially having spent time in two major elven cities now, definitely notice design elements of like an elven silhouette. But as you get closer, you also notice like, oh no, as a dwarf, like you recognize the work of your people. 
Sure. Like, so this is like a very strange kind of marriage of the two of a like dwarf that made uh, like, like a project that an elf ordered and like made the specifications for. Sure, sure. Yeah. Elven architecture, dwarven make. Yes, yeah. exactly. So, uh, amazing. Um, but in, but obviously very old. Um, and you can see now, like, it should actually be, like, a tall tower, um, like what you saw in Mithland. But it's, like, obviously, like, either, like, sunk down into the marshes. Hmm. So there might be more, like, below. And you also see, as you get closer, when you can actually start seeing it, there's, like, a dome shape that looks like it should be the top of a building. But it is about, like, 20 feet from the, the surface of the swamp. Okay. Given the sheer number of old maps and things and the fact that I have memory of ancient days, <laughs> um, do I have any recollection as to, like, what, like, the actual history of this place? Now that, like, I know that it was Celebrim Boers, it mm -hmm. was made by the dwarves, do I have anything else filed away in my big brain? Strangely, no. Okay. Ooh. Like, very clear absence of such, actually. <sighs> like, and it's weird that Celebrimbor, like, the greatest creator, would have dwarves make a place. Yeah. It's like, 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 it, it speaks to a secret. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. two things. First off, I'd like to highlight that site selection is an architect's thing. Mm -hmm. Dwarves don't make buildings with bad foundations that sink. Okay. Second. <laughs> uh, oh, we're throwing shade. <laughs> uh -oh. Second, uh, I don't know where Celebrimbor falls on the spectrum of the ages of the, the elves, but do I know what he looks like? Oh. Ooh. Mm. Possibly. Like, Celebrimbor was an Oldar. I don't... I'm checking. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I'm like, um, let's see. Uh, he... Sorry, I know I keep coming up with really esoteric questions. Yeah, I... But, uh... Like, did he have anything to do with the making of the Palantir? Was he part no, of that? No, he was not that old. Um, okay. So I believe he was born... He's Feanor's grandson. Yeah, so... Yeah, so he's... I think he was born in... The first age. Yeah, in the first age, it's not specific. It doesn't look uh -uh. like it's specific about whether he came from Valinor or was born in Middle Earth. I mean, Feanor didn't calm down until Middle Earth, so. That's true. I mean, you can have kids when you're not calmed down, I guess. Yeah, but he was a lot in Valinor. <laughs> um, yeah, he's uh, he's got some drama in his family tree. Like the origin of drama. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Fifth son of Feanor. Yeah, it doesn't specify where he was was born, but yeah, it's, he was. I, I'm gonna go with he was. He was born in in uh, okay Middle Earth, so you probably didn't see him specifically, but you definitely saw his his fifth grandfather. great grandfather, whatever that is. Great, 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 great. great. Exactly, great. All the greats. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Just curious. Yeah. Descended from one of those very tall elves. Yes. yes. The very tall He was of moderately tall size. Yes. I'm sure someone at some point will be like, um, actually. But, uh, yeah. All right. I think Runa is keeping a keen eye out for swans on the way to wherever we're going, just in case. Yeah. Ellen's sketching, actively drawing this tower as we walk towards it. Okay. Um, yeah. And uh, as you get close to it... Um, Lord Paddlefoot is, all right, we are here. This is the thing, whatever it is, the, the big thing, the tree. See, it's almost like a tree, but we it's not what I don't understand. You make very strange things, tall people. Paddlefoot, would you like to know the human word for it? Yes. It's called a tower. A tower. Do I get paid for learning such a thing? You sure do. Oh, she gives him a coin. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he seems very excited. I hold the coin. Very good. It is a tower. A tower. Good. I hope that the tower does not fall on you like a tree falls. I also hope that. Yes. Yes. He's very pretty. pleased with himself coming up with a thing that's nice to say. I would highlight that there is not a name for a fallen tower like a tree becomes a log. 
called a ruin. Uh, but ruin applies to everything. It is not specifically a fallen tower. The otter looks very confused. Well, tall people talk is so difficult. It should have names for things. Well, that's called a Minas Tower. Minas Tower. Minas Tower. Minas Tower. Mm -hmm. Okay, a Minas Tower. I found more Okay. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Okay, well, I hope that the Minas Tower does not fall on you like a log or tree falling, becoming a log. Yes. Um, and yes, if you have need of me, uh, I will maybe come back or not, depending on if you call for me or live. It's fine. Okay, goodbye. Thank you. We'll do both. <laughs> goodbye, Lord Pennyfoot. Goodbye, ex-servant of Lord uh, Lady Swift Swimmer. You've made a wise choice changing your loyalty to me. I mean, hiring me to help you be your guide. Yes. <gasps> goodbye. He like dives into the water and disappears. Very hinged otter behavior. <laughs> the seventh age is the age of the otter. <laughs> I mean, where things are growing, it. <laughs> um, yeah. So out of uh, kind of the 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 muck and the wetness, you do see this beautifully crafted uh, kind of like dome shape that uh, is is very large and then like the tower next to it so it looks like it has been part of a larger structure that clearly palace is a much better word for it even than tower um that is like sunk into um into the the wetness of the marsh um, do we yeah. see any obvious entrances um you can roll scan for me sure Mm -hmm. Ooh, get back here. Yeah. Okay. Oh no. Um, I do succeed with a tanguar. The dice tried real hard for me not to, though. It's nice. <laughs> um, you can tell, and just from your knowledge, probably of like having been in a lot of these places with ruins before, um. A lot of the designs of these places would have like a central area and then towers that kind of uh, are on uh, different points around it. So there's one that you can see that um, has not fallen. Excuse me. Bless you. Um, so you could make a educated guess that there's probably another tower opposite that mm -hmm. um, and maybe even others like around um, that maybe have sunk more or fallen over or whatever. And all of them would probably have some sort of staircase in them that would either lead up or down um, or be somehow attached to this main um, building with the dome on top of it. Okay. Um, Kai, you're looking at this. I'm sorry. Oh, no. Erland. Yes. Kai, call, you, call you by your character name. Kai is also looking. Yeah, Kai is also looking. With his mind yeah. palace. <laughs> um, and this, yeah, the, the design of this does track. Like, it's an, it's actually very well preserved for ruins from the second age. Hmm. Um, especially early enough to be, like, designed by Celebrimbor. Yeah. So, um, parts of it might be because it may have been, like, sunken for some time and, like, protected by the mud. Um, who knows? Like, it's also just really well made and most of it's made of stone. I just want to go touch it. Yeah. Erland has not stopped moving basically since the otter left unless someone makes him. No, we're going to the thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess I will kind of like point us to the most likely place there would be an entrance, mm -hmm. uh, based on my knowledge of getting into creepy old places to get treasure out of them. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to. Yeah. Um, so like wherever the next closest tower should be. Okay. Um, we'll say that, uh... You're opposite the one that you see. Like, the, the dome is between you and the tall tower. Okay. Um, so you're approaching, and you do see what would be um, another tower that seems like it's sort of collapsed on itself. Mm -hmm. um, but there might be an entrance there if you look. Okay. Yeah, I am absolutely going to clamor on that thing and take a look. Mm -hmm. And as we've been walking, Erland has started talking about Celebrimbor. So you guys are getting kind of a, like, very brief... Celebrimbor was so brilliant. 
it was one of the greatest smiths that the elves have ever seen and starts talking about the great things that Celebrimbor has made and specifically does not mention the whole <laughs> making the ring thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, it's uh, probably similar to if you're asking like a, a young person about their favorite band yeah. or like their favorite like pop star. Well, actually, blah, 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 blah. like I feel like. <laughs> well, Kellebrum will learn how to do this specific kind of smelting method that no one's ever been able to replicate yet. <laughs> it goes on like that for okay. a while. <laughs> um, so yeah, you do approach. You're approaching from the south. Okay. So the south tower is completely just crumbled in on itself. You can tell there were stairs that led down, but they're but it's collapsed to a point where, I mean, if you really spend a couple days or weeks digging it out, you might be able to. Um, but it the basically the, the top of the spire has like collapsed and completely filled the stairwell below. Okay. Um so I guess we'll just follow the um edge of the dome kind of around yeah. uh, to the next tower. Let's go. We're coming from the south. Let's go west, west yeah. because looking east worked out bad for me when I touched that thing. Yeah. <laughs> also <laughs> I don't want to be that lore master. He's like, you go east and nothing happens. So, yeah. yeah. You go west. <laughs> I was going to pick west anyway because okay. <laughs> Bruna is now wary of things that are eastward. <laughs> yeah. um, so you go, uh, and there's like a thicket of thorns, but you do see um, a spire there. It is partially collapsed. Um, and uh, they do resemble kind of a large well. Um, let's see. Um, and you do notice that there is kind of a cleared path through the brambles mm. that, uh, like, has, like, some, like, feather things that look similar mm -hmm. to the crone's canes and, like, some, like, poppets and, like, different things kind of resembling, like, like religious things that they would have made kind of going around kind of the little entrance to this spire. Mm. Okay. Um, and it is about crone height, like this little like hole in the the briar. Well, it looks like we are not the first to come through here. I I can't imagine anyone being incurious enough to not want to see what's around if they found this in their swamp. Let alone what's inside. True. This looks as good a place to enter as any. Uh. As we've kind of wandered around this castle, have mm -hmm. I seen any stones with like a maker's mark? Ooh, Ooh. good call. Oh. Uh, why don't you roll scan for me? Sure. <laughs> I made it. Not thanks to that feet die. Oh man, <laughs> what is up? I didn't get an eye. I just oh, got okay. a one, but. Um, let's see. Yes, you do see a, a, a mark, um, which is like a little bit of a strange thing that you've never seen before. There's like a dwarvish um, uh, mark in old Kaza. And then there's also a very elegant, um, what is very clearly elvish mark. And they're sort of intertwined. Hmm. And, uh... Can I... Like, is the the Dwarvish Mark part of it, is it as, affiliated with a particular... Yes. ...resident of Dwarf? Sure. Yes, they are. I don't know who it is at the moment, but I'll Google between now and the next time. It's cool. Um, oh, yeah, and, yeah so they, it's a very, like, famous Dwarven um, kind of craftsman but also it's a family name so like a dwarven family took it upon themselves to build this sure. and right. um you can assume based on what you've already been told that it's in uh kind of partnership for uh Caliber and Boar. Sure. sure and that is kind of the elvish ruin i would probably not keep this entirely to myself and i would show erland yeah <laughs> erland nerds out erland proceeds to nerd out and regrets that everything in the swamp is wet and cannot take a clean rubbing of it. Yes. Well, like, where in the building is the stone? Is it all the way at the base of a wall, or is it? Um, it's gonna be. I'm gonna say as you're approaching, like the tower. So, uh, 
it probably is what was it, it's going to be on a on a block that has fallen from the tower that's partially collapsed we can take it with us yeah there you go and uh <laughs> so it probably was like up high near the top of the of this spire you could probably assume that there's a similar mark on each one of the towers to kind of represent like the power of this place and the partnership and protecting it um and yeah it's it's sitting there to the side and I will say it is of a size that you could probably fairly easy um, say it's like a little bit, like a little bit bigger than like a softball. Oh, nothing compared to a basketball pearl. <laughs> <laughs> this is incredible. Yeah, I, it seems very old, but using the appropriate carving, it would hold up. Yeah, this family name you'd know from the dwarves is very old for dwarves. Like... This line probably has stopped, hmm. um, but they their their craftsmanship is like so well known that that has kind of continued, um, and people still speak of it today. And things made by them are considered like heirlooms or honoraries of a house. Sure, sure. Whatever their name ends up being. Maybe it. Maybe it becomes a like a, a dwarven like their house name is like a dwarven term for quality. Oh, kind of a thing. I like that. Okay. Like oh. You know, instead of just being like, that's really well made or masterwork or whatever, that's insert blank Product, dwarven name yeah. here. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you, you know, yeah. Yeah, it's like a, a, a famous designer kind okay, of thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I like that. This uh, would be a kingly gift. I, I, I'm I, so glad we found it. I, oh. I'm also glad to know that for so much of history, the elves and dwarves have managed to work together. You're right. It, it does very often feel like we are very distant. But there is evidence that it wasn't always so. Hmm. And the same for our lovely kingdoms of men. Companions! And Barinder is like near the hole. Mm -hmm. Shall we make our way through into the ruins? You know I'm ready. Yes. All right. Yeah. And thanks to uh, James VR Mod, who did a lot of fast Googling. Um, we're going to say, because uh, Celebrimbor became friends with the neighboring dwarf kingdom of Moria, Casa Doom, and uh, friends with Narvi. Okay. So we'll say it is the family of Narvi. We're in stone dragging distance from Moria. Yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Don't do it now, but at the time it would have been nice. All right. So that's the, the family name that you see there. Sure. Awesome. Uh, all right, and you start making your way down what is actually a surprisingly like, like uh, good condition spiral staircase. Um, it is very narrow, so you're gonna have to go down one at a time. Okay. Um, unless anybody stops me, I'm going first. <laughs> is it like a narrow, solid hallway on both sides, or is it just a narrow set of steps with a hollow, like? Uh, there's like a, like the way it's not like a, a pillar down the middle, but like there's like the edge of the stairs makes like a solid thing. There's not like an empty space in the middle. Gotcha. That, that's yeah. what I would. Yeah. So you can't like look down and see. It's like in a ca in an old castle to help support it. There's like mm. a solid kind of central core. Central. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. Cool. That's another sign that it's elven design because we know the dwarves don't believe in railings or nope no safety measures <laughs> none <laughs> um erlen will probably be at the back if no one stops him yeah i can go second oh i'm going first <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll... let's go i'm number three mm -hmm. no, 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 no. Until all right until... um Marilyn's stopping and taking rubbings every time that he finds a dry stone. Okay. Even if it's not even remarkable. <laughs> um, you can tell that this is actually, like, people come through here fairly regularly. There's And there's signs of, like, this may be, like, the crone's pathway down into what they called the palace. Um, and you go down for, like, a ways. Um, and you start to see the stone is uh, damp. Um, and you're starting to get the feeling that you're actually under the the level of the swamp now. So, <laughs> Aylin doesn't well, like that. Now, once we get past the 
point where we would have any natural light left at all. I'd light my torch. Yeah, it, it, it happens very quickly because uh, there is a still a little bit of like a, a top to it, even though it's crumbled. Mm -hmm. So within like a couple spirals, like in a in a maybe a story or two, you're in almost pitch darkness. Um, so yeah, you have your special ghost torch, um, and you go down and you go down and you go down and you go down, and it's just. Just to the point where you start being like, okay, maybe this will never end. You get down, you 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 see the bottom of the stairway, and you come out uh, to what looks like a hallway, but it's in the shape of uh, like the edge of what was the round building. So it's not a full open room, mm -hmm. um, but you can see as you come out from the bottom of the spiral staircase, you can look in both directions, and there's a bit of a curved hallway going in both directions. Um, and it's really beautiful, and it has images uh, engraven by the dwarves, and you can tell it's very specifically, like you've seen a lot of elvish carvings. This is a dwarvish carving of elven history. So... <laughs> <laughs> We've come in a weird full circle thing yeah. going on here. <laughs> yeah. And um, so, like, this is depicting the deeds of the elves of Eregion, mm -hmm. um, and including, like, the forging of the ranks. And um, you wouldn't know about the One Ring, and most of you probably wouldn't know what this is. Erland, you would know, like, the, you know, like, okay, the elves have rings. Um, you, as a ranger, would definitely know about the One Ring mm. that was, like, the cause of, like, all the badness. Mm. And this is, like, before... <laughs> so do you think I link it, like, what I'm saying with the, with that? You would know this history, okay. for sure. Okay. And this would have been specifically passed down, even, like, through the days of, like, the kings um, and, mm. and like, uh, Isildur and all of them. It would be passed down yeah. to... And this is like one of your kind of great shames yeah. as a people, like that our forefathers were not strong enough to just toss this ring when they had the chance. So I think uh, when I see the others like taking um, mm -hmm. taking it in and everyone has that kind of spectacle look to them, um, but Endor is just, just kind of goes pale a little bit mm -hmm. and just a little grim um, and it almost annoys him, mm -hmm. the, the fact that um, everyone just seems to be so enamored with it. And I think... Um, he observes the others like looking looking at the stonework um and then he just says very bluntly it's not something to be admired what you see here this is not a proud history this is not nothing but a reflection of how evil is born into this world it was wrought of beauty but I understand why you feel that way. Even the most powerful and ancient evils were once beautiful things. It does not change what, what the outcome is, what misguided. That's all this is. They carved this history thinking it was something to be celebrated, cherished, this entire place, its beauty. I realize now what it truly is. And I urge you not to be deceived by it. History, no matter how bleak, is worth remembering. If anything, it can be a cautionary tale. I hope that is how you interpret it. He kind of brusquely moves away. Mm. Oh. Baron dear, what do you think might be Celebrimbor's treasure that's down here now that you've seen these walls? Oh, geez. Um, <laughs> it has to be, well, I, I guess some sort of forge, right? Something to, something to relate to. What would your character think of? Um... Maybe a hammer of some sort. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to go around the table and want you each to tell me what you think Kilbrimbor's greatest treasure might be. 
<laughs> what your character thinks. Yeah. Um, let's go to... Okay, you all have puzzling faces, so I'm going to stall for a moment. I think I have an answer. An idea? Okay. <laughs> Ireland. Good job, by the way. Like, oh. I put you on the spot, and you like, <laughs> good job with that. Baron Deer. I have something to add once. Oh, okay. Go okay, go ahead. Oh, um, the thought flashes before Baron Deer that it might be a hammer, but he's ashamed of it, and he shunts it away. Like, the moment he thinks oh. of it, he just, like, makes sure he forces himself not to speculate and just, you know, like, because even the thought of it might be something oh. foul. Does he desire the hammer? A hammer of such power? Mm, I think it's like that kind of like guilt, you know what I mean? Like, I uh, just don't even think about it. That <laughs> Down that path lies okay. ruin. Very nice. I love it. In a horrible counterpoint to that, <laughs> Erland begins to wonder of all of the great secrets that Celebrimbor would have kept, given that his biggest secret is out. Mm. And of course, the first thing he thinks of is going back to what he originally thought was in the pearl. Does Celebrimbor hold a fragment of the knowledge of the Silmarils uh -huh. inside of him? And w again, that creeping thought that was growing, especially after touching the Palantir, of what could I do with a Silmaril? What could I change? I could make Glorfindel want to serve me. Mm -hmm. And what power and what might that would bring upon the shadow. Mm -hmm. It's the shadow that I'm worried about. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Totally, just to, to defeat the shadow. Uh -huh. That sounds legit. Yep. Very good. All right. Good luck following that. <laughs> those two things, friends. <laughs> Hannah and Runa, what do you suspect uh, Celebrimbor's greatest treasure would be? If you have something, go I ahead. do not. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, first, the question. Mm -hmm. uh, I know the elves know about the rings mm -hmm. and and all of that jazz, and I understand that the descendant of Numenor understands about the rings. But like, dwarves got rings, and then they just disappeared from the story. You would know about the rings of power. Sure, you would know definitely know about the One Ring. Whether you specifically, Hanar, would know a bunch about it, like I, I probably don't. Like, okay, it was bad, powerful artifact. Yeah, like that's a thing. Yeah, yeah. so it would be passed down. A lot of the dwarven rings were lost or consumed by dragons, actually. Oh, because dragons tended to be in mountains. Funny how that worked. Um, and they or were lost to the dwarves. consumed like eight or. Uh, yeah, generally, or, oh, okay. or collected, um, or like nobody knows. Okay. So. Is it, is it known dwarves? like what dwarves got the rings? Um, is that a common thing? Like, were they great leaders that we remember, and then bad things happened, or, it, or did it, they turn all? Yeah, horrifying? it's sort of nebulous. So okay. they were like, they were respected and powerful, but they it was so long ago. It's not like specifically named. I don't think any of them. Gotcha. It's very similar to the the Nazgul and the the rings that were given to men, like. Ah, uh, powerful kings of old got the tree. Yeah. Sure, sure, okay. Um, but not that I re remember. The elves are specifically named the ones that were given rings, um, but I don't think that the, the dwarf. I think we only know where like maybe one of the dwarven ones even ends up. Yeah, if they, I remember they correctly. They, a lot of them disappear. Sure. Okay. Um, so yeah. No problem. I, I just had no idea. Yeah. Like, they kind of just shine that on. Mm -hmm. In the in the films, yeah, like, they do. Like, they kind of shine it on in the text too. Yeah, they, 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 exactly. what she says in the in the intro to the movie, that's pretty much what we get. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. Cool. Uh, well, I, it's got to be the, and here's where things go shadowy for Hanar in particular. Mm -hmm. It's the methods of crafting things. So, like, his greatest treasure secret is how he was able to do these things that no one else has ever figured out. Mm. And being a dwarf that's not good at making things, getting knowledge like this would be the best thing ever. So that I could go back and be like, look, look at this thing I made. Mm -hmm. All of you now work for me. Like, I will show you a tiny bit of the things I read in a book. And I'll be a king. 
I love how this is like so much more tempting and turning you all to evil more than like even like putting the palantir was. <laughs> Amazing. I mean, it depends on what we find down here. No, for sure. I can't wait. Okay. Um, mine's gonna be a lot less uh, okay. weighty than that. Uh, Runa is a golden retriever. She <laughs> really does. I don't think she thinks too hard about like what Calibrimbor's greatest treasure would should be based on him. I think she thinks more about like what she hopes it is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what does she hope it is? And she hopes it's a really fancy sword. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> that would make sense. I'm like, proud of her. Yeah. All right. I love it. She just wants the shiny thing that she wants. Yeah. Okay. Oh, very good. Very fancy. <laughs> yeah, fancy. <laughs> um all right. We're actually going to end there for tonight. With all of you kind of dreaming about what you think Celebrimbor's greatest treasure that is hidden down here is. And uh, we will find out next week. Um, so thank you so much. Let me find my notes here. <clears throat> thank you so much for joining us. Whether you're watching or listening, uh, we appreciate you. And we'd like to thank our chat mod, James V, for his super hard work. Thank you so much. Like on the spot with helping us with bots and also Googling random facts that neither Kai or I know, which is few and far between, but often happens. Um, thank you to our amazing Patreons who keep us ad-free and independent. It's because of you we're able to play games we want, how we want to, and not have to worry about any ad revenue or sponsorships or any of that stuff. If you want to join them, you can join us at happyjacks.org slash Patreon. Um, thank you. You're amazing. And uh, let's go around the table and introduce ourselves and plug our stuff. So let's start over here, Dave. Nah. Uh, once again, I am Kadave. Uh, yeah, the, my big thing to plug right now is the fact that the Renaissance Pleasure Fair of Southern California is ongoing. You can come out and see me and the actual performing Poxy Boggards uh, sing uh, amazing songs, as well as the Merry Wives of Windsor that also sing amazing songs. Uh, that yeah, you've heard do. samples of both of their music for years and years right here on this podcast, as well as. Uh, Merry Wives of Windsor that have sung amazing songs with Kimmy as the Mary Sues, right? Yeah. Oh, God. I, I was like, for some reason, my head just went completely wrong name. Oh, and, but I pulled it out. Yeah, okay. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> we're very merry. We were Mary Wives, and now we're Mary Sues, and they're still Mary Wives. It's very complicated. Very good. Uh, but yeah, come out and see us. There's three weekends left already. It's oh, my God. Really? really? Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, oh, one yeah. last weekend. Suddenly, it feels like yeah. it burns by. Yep, yep. Uh, and... This weekend on Saturday, maybe if you're coming out to see us, there might be thunderstorms. So it'll be an adventure <laughs> okay. for all of us. We're if close. it is thunderstorming, don't do the zip line ride. Just <laughs> yeah, how the way to find out. wisdom <laughs> from Dave. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Um. Hi everyone, I'm the new guy. Hi. Uh, my name is Ray, and I am a uh, writer and a publisher. You can find my work at myth.works. Uh, we have a game called The Wild Sea that we have a Kickstarter going on for right now. So do check that out if that sounds like your cup of tea. It's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, pleasure playing with everybody mm-hmm. today. Yeah. I, have, I backed it. I'm very excited. Yeah. I have so many. I have so many thoughts about Wild Sea. I'm very excited yeah. about it. Uh, <laughs> it's extremely cool. Yeah. Uh, you guys should definitely check it out. Hi, guys. I'm Kai. Uh, you can find me everywhere on the internet as Estelle of Imladris. I'm the person here doing all the stuff in Cinderin. Um, you can find me uh, on so many other places, but I'm going to plug the first and foremost, most important thing, the finale of the web series that I was the costume designer for, The Party, airs tomorrow morning, um, our seven-episode web series uh, that I was the costume designer for that was made purely as a passion project, drops tomorrow, uh, is about a group of friends who play... Dungeons and Dragons, what? Wild, um, and other tabletops, which we feature a lot of fun other smaller tabletops in every single place that we possibly could. It is a show chocked full of as many nerd Yay. references as humanly possible. Um, and the finale also features fun other guest stars. Uh, the rest of the show has featured wonderful guest stars, so please come check it out. Um, all the views and all that stuff has been so, so appreciated. We just broke 200K on our pilot on YouTube. Ooh. Um, so yes, please, please, please go check out the party and enjoy the insane finale tomorrow. But you can also find me on Sunday. My podcast, The Lore Brewery, is back with our seventh episode of our fairy tale 5e campaign called Far, Far Away, where I play the worst teenager you've ever met. Um, <laughs> he's the worst. 
Um, uh, but we play twisted versions of fairy tales that you know and some that you maybe don't, but you get to learn about. Um, and uh, that is all for me for this very second. <laughs> <laughs> there will be always more. There's always more. <laughs> but in the meantime, you can come back and uh, hear all of the dark thoughts inside of Erlen's head about what Celebrimpor is making next week. Oh. Yay! So Very excited. Uh, and hi, everybody. I'm Sam. I have been Runa of Bree, your friendly neighborhood uh, swamp spelunker this week. Uh, you can find me on the internets at Red Pandroid. Um, and if you follow me, you can check out um, my spring collection, which is still live. Actually, today is the last day of my spring sale. Um, if you use, for the next two hours, um, the code SPRING666 <laughs> on oh giarnastore.com, you can get 10% off your order of cute and ominous clothing designed by me. Um, <laughs> Sending that to people when I get home. <laughs> uh, and you can catch me back here uh, doing dumb golden retriever things as Runa next week. Yes. <laughs> and hi, I'm Kimmy. She, her. I've been your lore master for this game. As always, it is a delight. Ray, thank you so much for joining us. Yay. You are amazing. Uh, yeah, and having a ranger with like issues with the history is just so <laughs> chef's kiss. Um, you can find me at Golden Lasso Girl everywhere. Um, let's see. Uh, Decima, my tarot world building game is for sale right now and I submitted it to the any. <gasps> I have no idea what will happen with that. I've never done that before. So yeah. hopefully it gets there in the mail in time. I don't know. Um, and if you want to find all the games that I design, you can go to goldenlassogames.com and let's see, we have some things coming up. We will be at Strategicon at the the middle of May, I think May 21st, 23rd, somewhere in there, Memorial Day weekend. That's where we'll be. Um, so if you want to come play games, joining us there. Um, we also do our advice show podcast live on Saturday nights. We're usually a little tipsy. And it's a lot of fun. So come play games with us. Sign up for our Happy Jacks games. Buy stuff. We, we, we get progressively more tipsy <laughs> as the show goes on. It's a lot of fun. Um, and also this Sunday, May 7th, we have our official Happy Jacks uh, Ren Fair oh, meetup. So if you want to go to the Renaissance Fair uh, here in Los Angeles, um, on... <laughs> it's not I Italy, wasn't ready. it's I wasn't near ready. LA. <laughs> um, on uh, May 7th, we're having our meetup. We usually meet up or like after the first Boggard show, which is I think at like... One? One. Okay, yeah, there's no, <laughs> yeah. no shows start on the dirty stage till afternoon, so. Um, yeah, come join us there, and yeah, you can find me at Golden Lasso Girl everywhere, or if you at Happy Jacks RPG, it's also me. So, yeah, thank you so much. Uh, see you next week. Um, we are also off this week. We don't have a, an advice show this week, but it's starting back the next week after that, which is the second week of May, despite what I've said for many weeks. So, yes, check out happyjacks.org slash schedule, and we'll see you later. Bye.